Welcome to Detroit, everyone. We will have a special coverage for you here from Motor City or Motown, as you call it. Really nice old Art Deco buildings we have inside downtown. And this is also close to the State Fair area. And also the GM headquarters is of course in Detroit. So still a lot of car stuff going on here. But of course the city also shows the downfall of the classic car industry. Nevertheless, the Detroit Motor Show is still here. There's a lot of new stuff going on and we will have an exclusive coverage for you with a lot of different manufacturers. Of course, we have a lot of highlights, for example, the all new Toyota Camry, the Lexus LS. We'll have a special Volkswagen ID bus concept and also the Volkswagen Tigon Allspace, the BW Atlas and the R line. Then we have um, some Audi cars, for example, the new Q8 concept, the A5 new generation as a convertible. Also, we have the SQ5, the sporty version of the all new generation of the Q5. And we will also show you some strolling around on the motor show. You will surely enjoy this one as well. And also check out the Mercedes E-Class Coupe. Furthermore, we have a lot of high spec interviews. So we met a lot of top managers from the automotive industry. You can enjoy those interviews as well. They deliver you a lot of insight as for design or also for technical background. So this one will show you all our coverage from the Detroit Motor Show. Just lean back, relax, and then after some shots to enjoy, we will start with the each single review. The Toyota Camry is maybe not the most spectacular vehicle, but it is a very important one because this one here is one of the most selling, or in some years, the most selling car in the US. Alone last year, 400,000 units have been sold, so pretty big stuff for sure. And in this case here, from 2011 to 2017 or 16 now the end, there was the seventh generation. Now the all new eighth, gen eighth generation here on Autogefühl. We will give you all the exterior, interior details and specs here as well. This one is the hybrid and we we'll also have the petrol engines available and show you the different trim levels, XLE for example, this one here, but also the sportier trims. Let's go. So what are they trying to do with the all new generation? Of course, making it appear more modern. The XLE trim here is the rather classic trim, but it looks already quite sporty. You see, there's a very horizontal stress, but also a smiling face and the hybrid features the blue Toyota logo. And for, you know, not a top sports version, already a very huge lower grille. And I mean, most recently, I didn't really like the Toyota design, but now they seem to step up the game and make something fresh and something modern again. So I think it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. What you can also see is that they place the front camera right there and also the hood to reduce the insurance cost in small crashes. The hood is cut off here, so you have this front lip. Um, Design-wise, I like it more when the hood goes all the way to the front, but obviously it has also economic advantages. 4 meters 80 or 15 foot 9 is the total length of the new Camry and is a mid-size sedan and therefore it's also so popular, especially because of the price-performance ratio and because people say it's also a very long-lasting vehicle. So if you own a Toyota Camry so far, please give us your feedback in the comments then we can also check out because especially the customers have a 
the cars for years and can really give us good experience with a long term run because we can always rate what's new, the look and feel and stuff, but we cannot really rate the long term experience. But you can as a car owner. What can we see here in the XLE trim? Well, <laughs> those tires have been sprayed. You know, there are those, those tire sprays that make them look glossy um, and the car appears even newer then. Um, the, the rims are actually rather in a classic style, as you see them right here now, so nothing very spectacular. And let me just check the rim factor, where it is. It usually stands also on the tire. Yeah, there we go. It is 18 inch. So 18 inch here. We got the hybrid logo, because this is the hybrid variant. Then you see the door handle features the design highlight, the dropping line. Another line at the lower part, you see the light, shadow, light and shadow play right there. Then a round coupe style ending here at the rear windows. Obviously sedan with four doors. And then you see in this renew that the whole vehicle sits flatter and looks flatter. The window appears flatter and it is actually. And also here a shoulder part is formed. And what did they do? Well, they created this new platform the car sits on. And that means also a lower center of gravity, for example. So it does not only appearing flatter, it is flatter and also gives you more agility when driving. At least we can expect this. As for the rear also, the taillights begin at the side of the vehicle and then are stressed out all over the place. So this is a common design trend nowadays to have very horizontally laid out taillights. The hybrid features are also a special hybrid logo right here. We'll soon come to the engines and I think it's a very aligned design, not so much playing around. For example, um, a lot of you guys have also criticized the Toyota Mirai layout or the new Toyota Prius. And I also think, though, so, um, a lot of Toyota vehicles I do not really like from design. But this one here pleases me very much. So I think this is a good step, a good decision. And um, so far, a real surprise here for me, positive surprise. What's your take on that? Unfortunately, Toyota has told me those are pre-production vehicles and we're not allowed to open the hood. That's really too bad, but I can tell you something about the engines. There will be a 3.5 liter V6 or also a 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder. And this one then can also be combined with the hybrid drive, an inbuilt hybrid. That's the car we have right here. So let's get to the interior. Um, a door sound test would not be uh, that suitable because the window is lowered here in this case and therefore wouldn't sound really appropriate. Um, see, this one looks a little bit loose. Not sure why they did it in that way. Strange a little bit. So, um, interior. So I'm going to remove my shadow for a second here because uh, those um, st fair lights. Ah, there's my shadow again. So the interior has also been completely new and also, there are completely new seats, so the seat form is new. As surfaces, you start with fabric seats in the base model. I'm glad there is, so the most cameras will be sold with fabric seats. You can also get a leatherette called Soft Touch at Toyota, which is a sustainable variant. But at the motor shows, they always feel like giving it the top option. I don't like this trend, but um, here are the full animal skin seats, which you do not have to pick. Then let's get inside, and we can have the first test seating here. You know, I have driven so many different cars in the mid-size segment and therefore I can also very well compare it. The cockpit here um, seems a little bit high in general, so it's a very rather well bulky cockpit, so you don't have you know, too much vision. That gives you rather a sporty look and I think that's also difference to the previous generation. You have a sportier feeling when sitting in this interior. Headroom wise, you see that the A pillar berm comes a little close to my head. I got the seat in the lowest position now. One meter is 86 or six foot one. And that leaves me a little bit headroom, but definitely you can see, and we see that a lot from the Japanese manufacturers, that they really still manufacture a lot also size-wise for their home markets. And um, yeah, it can, can be a little bit close if you're even taller than me. The steering column can be adjusted. Always, it also works very smoothly. Let's check the materials here on the top dashboard. We got a soft touch here from the plastics. Inside of the doors, this is hard plastic. The top one is a little bit softened up. And I think this is also a 
step further in build quality and um, from the build quality what we've seen here at the moment um, it really resembles for example the current Hyundai models um, also the buttons for example they come come quite close so everything looks really solid from the first impression and I think some of the new materials is also what this all new generation is about. So what about the rear compartment? I left the seat as I would be driving see leg room wise still plenty of space left so the packaging is definitely not bad um, headroom wise in the th interesting thing here it looks really flat but till till the end the roof raises again a little bit so here this wouldn't work but then you know when I'm leaning backward that still works so you know for people my size again 186 in meters or six foot one that still works so four adults here will you know, be able to sit here easily. And it's also not a too far leaning back position, so overall quite comfy, although, again, the roof is not that high. And, I mean, they have put the design in a way that the car is actually flatter. And, of course, that also has some impact then on the inside. Um, on the middle seats, well, still okay, actually, to sit on the middle seats, so can't complain about that. It's, of course, a little bit harder from the surface. So the outer seats would definitely be more comfortable and um, then you can also put down the armrest here for bevel shoulders but I'm not sure if that's pre-production here also because it falls down to the seat here. Maybe it's also meant to be in this way yeah, because the bevel shoulders also look like that. A little bit uncommon but then again, I mean, why not? Usually it stays here like this in most of cars but here obviously goes down all the way. Is that also in the predecessor generation? don't really remember. So, and let's see if you can flip the seat at some point here. No, that's obviously not possible. You have to do it from the trunk. Um, but what I can tell you, um, there are also Isofix covers for child seats and also a top tether. So two child seats will be not a problem. And too bad we are also not allowed to check the trunk. That I, you know, I could have lived with not opening the, the hood, but... It's also not allowed to open the trunk. Probably, I think, um, in some pre-production vehicles, they don't have fixed like the, all the covers on the inside, and maybe we would have to look at some cables or so. That might be the reason. And now as a comparison, this one here is the XSE trim, so the sporty trim. And you can see the glossy black is being used also at the front bumper, also the front grille in a glossy style with the aluminum contrast. And this is definitely the sportier style. Which one do you, you like better, the rather classic or this sporty one? I think both have definitely something. And I think this trim also shows that this can really count as a sport sedan and I think it's a really interesting concept that you know, such a vehicle that is very, very common in the US will be made so sporty from the appearance and so special now. It is very unusual that they take such a huge design step. 19-inch two-color rims here, so a little bit bigger than the ones we have seen so far. And this one here also features the panoramic roof. You see it's opened right now, but we have seen the, the real roof line so far. This one here in the XSE trim has the same vehicle color at the top of the car but we'll soon see also a different style where this design line here is used for the contrasting black roof very interesting here what do you think about the red one which one would you pick in which color and well this is, I think a little bit misplaced this plastic uh, air outtake here which obviously doesn't have a real function this looks a little bit weird but other than that also interesting sporty styling here with the v6 with four exhaust pipes overall so they should probably also give us a quite good sound and now we get to the interior of the xse and this can also the animal skin version you can also go for other ones as i said earlier then this is the characteristic dark style sporty and definitely more black is used for example also not with this wood visual part more you know in a conservative way on the one hand and the lumen contrast are a little bit better put through if you just pick the black interior however i really like the gray interior as well it's conveyed somewhat a little bit brighter feeling 
Here you can see white contrast stitches, for example. So I also would like to know which one would you prefer, the bright or the dark one. By the way, the platform is called TNGA, Toyota New Global Architecture. This is the platform that this car sits on, and you see it also leaves some space for new design highlights. This one here as well, the XSE, the sporty trim, and here also with shiny black alloys. And then this is the very special, the black roof you have, and the design line in the front at the um, over the shoulders I showed you earlier. This one now serves here as the contrasting part. So before you could see a design line there in the same vehicle color. Now you can see how this one is split here with the black roof. And I mean, sure, you can see that is really much to, to look at for sure. Um, but maybe it's exactly your thing. I would maybe go for a rather classic layout, just taken in pure blue without a contrasting black roof. But if you want to have it screaming out, it almost reminds me of a Lexus RCF. So a really dramatic design. I think probably one of the most dramatic design we have ever seen for a very classic mid-size sedan. And I'm really anxious to see if this, that one will be punished or be honored by the customers. Interior here in this case, red animal skin. Uh, um, sorry, I mean, the design is really great of this car, Ooh. but this combination here with the red seats and ah, uh, no, I don't think so, <laughs> or what do you think? But still you can see again that um, this new interior in general from the from the forms and also the quality material that is used, I'm really satisfied with it. So um, I would say from my first impression here, well done. We cannot access the trunk, it's really too bad, but I've already seen that there are three top tethers behind the seats, so child seat mounting will be really no problem. And there's one variant which is, you know, even sportier, probably less comfortable. <laughs> and you know, here this stock car, Camry, uh, really spectacular. No, you cannot really buy it, um, but you can drive it if you are a professional race driver, aren't you? And the exterior design leader for this very car, Ian Catabiano, will also fill us in on his side of the view now. So what was the main aspect? I mean, I already realized this is really a different style of mid-size sedan. There are so many mid-size sedans on the market that look all equal, mm. but you obviously tried to create something different here. Yeah, we, we really wanted to try to create a, a new type of mid-size sedan that represents Toyota Camry in a new way and to really stand apart from the competition. I think a lot of mid-size sedan right now is becoming repetitious. They all have the same window graphic, the basic body shape, basic face structure. So we tried really hard to stand out and make something uniquely recognizable as some kind of new Toyota. And then maybe when people... You, you can show it while, yeah, while talking. Maybe when people see this car, they, if you didn't see the badge, you wouldn't know what the car is. And I think that's true for both the XLE version and XSE version. But if you look at the front, we tried to really create a dramatic, starting from the top, a dramatically low hood with a lot of shape streaming to the front of the car. And the upper grille is like a, a floating intake. It's like an intake and we put the Toyota symbol mark deep in that intake, more performance image. And that whole upper, that upper face is floating and clamped by the uh, side uh, side front fenders. And it was inspired by the shape of a racing catamaran, like the America's Cup racing series. So we wanted a really low center of gravity image for the face and very wide and planted to the ground, but recognizable from 300 yards away. It's really important that our car stands out at a distance. And then all these lines you see at the front they actually continue all the way around the car. The we can, we can yeah. continue here. The surface the is always moving. It's always dancing around the exterior. Every image, every angle should be expressive and enjoyable to look at, but simple and strong at the same time. So those lines at the front, they actually follow through the body, and that strong core goes all the way through the side to the end. And we have a beautifully strong shoulder 
and these really these crisp character lines that set up strength. They have that power through the body, and that power and stability through the body allows the motion of the front fender to the cabin all the way to the rear pillar here, and then that motion goes through the fender and down the rocker and out the front. So we have a strong core and this emotional movement as energy flow going through the car. And that flow exactly always connects to the wheels from every view. So maybe unlike previous Camrys or other midsize sedans, every view, these wheels should be planted to the ground. We aim for a good stance from every view. Definitely more of a sports sedan feeling, right? So it's a kind of a, it's a beautiful, roomy yet personal cabin. It's a really gorgeous shape. The window graphic is different from what everybody else is doing right now. And a very slim A-pillar. Very slim and, A-pillar. And then this kind of Targa style rear ending. So you continued yeah. more to the, to the end and yeah, still so falling down. We made the, a, the A-pillar, the front pillar is very fast angle. And it actually tapers and gets very thin. So it looks very sleek and lightweight. But from a driver's point of view, the visibility is fantastic. So it's a great driver's car. And as the cabin shoots back, the C-pillar, we stretched it back really far. And the roof line, we pulled that roof line peak point really far back. It's 200 mils longer than the current car. So we had a whole new production system to make that roof. And that length and the beautiful line work of this pillar nestled and kind of planted between the shoulder and big flare gives a beautiful, more premium quality uh, more of a luxury car image for the rear pillar and then it makes great stance because everything if we walk around the back and watch out behind you here uh, they don't fall down yeah. don't fall down. <laughs> but all the lines wrap around and sweep back this way and all the lines terminate behind between the tires making sure that the tires always look out stance is always great and I think everything like again whenever you see this car from every view it should look emotional and beautiful and in motion and dynamic and uh, two levels up premium. We end up for a definitely more premium image and even, even all the graphics, all the font is totally new. It used to be one, <laughs> one badge and we made a totally new like a mid-century modern uh, font and spaced it out individual letters and we made a beautiful grabbing tail and these lights when they're lit Ah, just gorgeous. And I think the cool thing is, and if you can just swing the camera that way really quick. Well, the spoiled versions, yeah. yeah. So that character line and that rear pillar, we utilize that pillar to create a blackout roof option. So on the sport model, you can order a black roof, which changes the whole character of the car. It makes it more of a rear wheel drive looking vehicle, even lower to the ground, higher contrast, and a much more um, strong statement. So personally, that's the car I've already ordered. And uh, white with black roof with red leather interior. And I think it's a really new, it's a bold statement for us. Um, I think it takes Camry from just being a normal midsize segment sedan to just a beautiful, gorgeous car that has a lot of impact. So I was thinking about, you know, in segments which are rather conservative with a lot of customers and they don't expect too much change, this is rather daring to do that yeah. because, you know, in this whole segment, the, there's more like evolution, but now this one seems rather like a revolution. Yeah. So um, do you, are you afraid in any way that may, the customer might be, you know, a little bit scared? No, I'm not afraid because I think, yeah, we did a more daring design. But it's, it's really more beautiful. And I think our customer's expectation is more. It's always higher expectation and more value for your money. And I think we deliver that. And yeah, I know sometimes, the Cam sometimes everybody thinks Camry customers are kind of boring, but they're not. They're actually just looking for a great car that's safe and reliable and easy to use and will work for them every day. So we gave them that. Those Camry fundamentals are still there. Toyota fundamentals, always there. But on top of that, we can add beautiful styling, bold imagery, and maybe, maybe the black roof option is too much. Not for me, but for maybe some people it's too much. But I think for everybody else, 
our XLE version is going to be really great. And you should really check out the interior of this car too because the level of premium is two times higher. Thank you so much for Thank the insight. You. Thank you very much. And now we have found the respective expert also for the interior. William Chagorski is the head of the interior design for this car, the project manager. And now we've also turned the infotainment screen on and so you can give us a tour of this new updated software and what it is capable of and of course also about this you know, very unusual central design. Yeah, let me talk to you about the, the main idea behind it. So when we sat down to do the Camry, the, the team from uh, California, the idea was to create something that felt two classes up. So we didn't really look at our, our current competition. We wanted people to feel like this Camry is a reward. You know, for other camera, you know, for owning a camera, you buy this and you feel great about it. You know, it's not just transportation, it's something you aspire to. So the way that we tried to achieve that was breaking what I call the traditional T. The original, most Camrys are very uh, stable and kind of use this kind of T architecture. But what we wanted to do here was create more driver focus and introduce what we call rhythmic layers which basically provides this idea where everything kind of feels like it's assembled together, more constructed, and I don't want to say handmade, but more like a human touched it. And then these rhythmic layers provide some kind of excitement and driver focus. Um, this point right here in the center, so you're, we're talking about basically the, the UX, the UI. This piece right here, we call it a component island. And unusually, typically these features are spread out through multiple components, but here, we try to integrate them all into one seamless part that like you could pull it off and hold it up, mount it on the wall, <clears throat> but it's all these beautiful materials and technology integrated in, into one component, which is again, I think a really unusual way to achieve uh, a quality appearance. Will it also look like in the very base model, um, just maybe with a smaller screen or how does yeah, it work so, trim, trim wise? So, so that was, I think the beauty of it. We wanted to make sure that even the base model of this Camry felt Again, like a reward. It's, it's not like you're being punished for buying the least expensive. Every one of these provides you with you know, a level of value and some excitement. You know, you're like, wow, you know, I'm getting, this is a great car for the money and for you know, what, I, what I intend. It's, it's a fantastic uh, vehicle. So I think um, just the, the very base model doesn't have the biggest screen. It doesn't have the right. largest screen, correct. So this one is, obviously we're in, uh, I think the XLE, which is the most premium. So you have, you know, I think th this is a sync, or not, excuse me. You get it. Um, it's not, um, I think, the middle trim, is it? Yeah. This is the uh, Entune 3 that we have in here. I've been walking around the show looking at all of our competitors, so it's yeah. a, sorry about that. <laughs> no so problem. Entune 3, so this is the latest version of it, and it's, it's a much more integrated version of uh, Entune and offers a whole bunch of uh, unified uh, experiences. So basically for driving safety, you'll see, like when you pull up, say, uh, I don't have a, another phone here connected here. If you pull up Pandora or one of these other ones, you'll notice that now all of the menus are on one side. So it takes the, each individual menu and converts it into an Entune style. And it makes it so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. We're trying to make it, again, more safe. And uh, smartphone connectivity, either via Bluetooth or via cable then with um, mirroring function? Exactly. And then <clears throat> one of the really nice things here, this is, it's, a, it's a small touch. But we really try to think of everything. Typically, when you get into a car, you'll have your, basically your volume here and your tuning here. Again, you're driving on the road, it's a reach function. So unusually, you'll see we have basically, you have the volume here and tuning right below it. It's all these like little small touches that we're trying to make the UI, UX experience more seamless, easier for the customer, and you know, just you know, ultimately a better experience. How was the process? Because um, talked about it with design as well in such cars. Usually the design is rather conservative and the designs are not allowed to take a huge step. Right. Where did the decision came from that you were actually allowed to do this? Was it like you saying, come on, let's let's do this really and you have to persuade the top management or did it came other way around? No, I, you know, Accio, was, it's, it's a really been a transformative time at Toyota. You know, it's not just a bumper sticker that, you know, Wakadoki that we want to make exciting cars. It comes from the top down, and it's a, it's been a great time to be a Toyota employee. I think everyone could speak to that. He loves driving. He loves you know the passion of cars, so he's not looking for anything that is kind of the status quo. He wanted everything to be shaken up, you know, and that filtered all the way down to where guys are touching pen to paper, metaphorically. It's all Photoshop nowadays, but that you know that being the idea that 
we want to see the, you know, shake things up. So again, we sat down to do this and we weren't looking to make what you would say is a, just a traditional Camry. We want to hold on to those customers, but we wanted to give them something really new, something exciting. Again, you see this, there's more driver focus here, kind of like strong meter connection to you. It's not what you expect, but it's like somehow really satisfying. And you know, again, it's a reward. Last question. Um, we are always into sustainability, also as for the car interiors. Um, maybe you can fill us in again on the materials being used. Uh, do you also use, for example, also natural materials that are maybe bound into the dashboard meanwhile, like some parts of it? And also what about the seats? I heard there's also this um, soft-touch leatherette available as an alternative for a more sustainable leather variant and starts also yeah. with, with fabric. I can only really speak just in general terms. I know that we are, you know, Toyota is very committed to recyclability and sustainability in a lot of materials. That, the specific, uh, specificity of what's in here, I'm not really, really sure of, but I can just speak to, you know, we have a general concern. We want to make sure that our cars, you know, are not harming the planet. And I, I'm sure the team has done what they had to. We had to talk to the chief engineer. I'm sure he can give you a lot of detail. Yeah, because for example, animal skin seats, that's not really <laughs> sustainable, just to give you a feedback. It's also what our customers, um, right, you know, exactly. um, have a feedback. I think it's really a thing you could or should also maybe um, include in your future design. That would be great, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hey guys, we're live on stage here also at the Toyota booth in this monitor. This is interesting. Oh wow, I'm in the middle of the wind tunnel now. <laughs> and this leads us over to our conclusion of the Toyota Camry. One of my positive surprises of this motor show for sure, because indeed the Toyota Camry is such a, you know, rather conservative vehicle, has been so far, and you know, solid. The price is reasonable, you get a lot of, lot of room on the inside and reliable and stuff and good customer feedback, everyone drives it. But then making it not an evolution, which we have seen with a lot of manufacturers doing with their very generations, but making it really a revolution. So it's very seldom that they dare so much exterior both, exterior and interior. For example, you think about Škoda, they have that a lot of on the exterior, but not so much on the interior. Here, really, exterior and interior really changed a lot. And I think it's a spectacular design on the outside, making it from a conservative car to a, ver to a car where you say, I really want to have it because of the emotional factor, not because of the reasonable factors. And then also on the interior, really interesting forms, sculptural forms. Also enough um, seat surface um, choices, that's for sure. And yeah, I mean, engines we will um, maybe be able to test at some point. So I'm um, usually, you know, auto crews are running over the Toyota um, press department in Germany as well. We don't get the American cars, but I've heard that they at least do not exclude that this car will never come to Europe. So maybe this will also change because as Sedan, as we have it right here now, I'm pretty sure it can also work in Europe, especially as the build quality has been stepped up. Then maybe we can also drive the car, or maybe our American viewers give us so much comments then down there that they tell the uh, the US Toyota PR department, say, come on, invite Autogefühl over to the States again when we are finally able to show this car driving. Then we can also check out the engines, the trunk, hybrid, and also the V6. We would, glad, we would be glad to actually do that for you. I hope you enjoyed this extensive preview, review, I want to call it, static here from the Detroit Motor Show from the Toyota Camry. I really enjoyed it. It was very interesting for sure. I want to hear your opinion about the car. And we will continue on further to more cars here on the show. The all new generation of the Lexus LS is right here at the Detroit Motor Show. The LS is the big luxury sedan from Lexus. So really long vehicle and you can already see at the front the characteristic dramatic Lexus styling is continued with those samurai <laughs> design uh, alike and also even stressed headlights. So very dramatic in the front. Also the hood has been higher just a little bit and it's quite handy that we have this turning platform behind us because then you can also steadily see the side profile and the car looks really stretched. It is quite long actually, so 5 meters 20 or 17 foot 1. Ian, this car, the show car has 20 inch rims, it starts with 19 inch, can then be upgraded to those ones. Here you see bright chrome style and very significant is that we can see the, the tail line strong shoulders and then 
the roof is really carried out in a in a sport back style and it seems to be a new thing with Toyota and Lexus that they now tend to go for this sport back style not really this falling sedan layout and I think it looks quite well. I mean, we've all seen now with that all-new Toyota Camry, for example, um, looks a little bit the same with the continuing roofline. Very interesting, for sure. And I mean, that makes the car appear even more stretched. So, among all of the big sedans, they are surely one of the most spectacular ones. We've seen it with other Lexus models so far, for sure. And on the technological side, what is interesting about this vehicle, as we approach the rear, see it here, how sculpture also the rear lights are formed. So this is we, when you don't want to have something conservative. Fake exhaust pipes, by the way, the read exhaust is on the inside there. Two cameras, I can also see mount on the car, LS500. So on the technological side, what's new? They have lowered the center of gravity and that promises a sportier ride, they say. And engine-wise, there will be a new 3.5-liter V6 twin turbo with 415 horsepower. Also, there will be a hybrid variant available, then with less horsepower, 359 at the moment. It says this one will give you better fuel economy than, um, I mean, for such a heavy car. Of course, it won't be so good the fuel um, economy, but I mean the hybrid can help definitely and will also be sufficient as as for the power. So, really impressive layout on the exterior, and I want to hear your opinion if you like it or not. My first impression is it's definitely you know screaming out, and maybe all of the other brands look rather boring if in contrast to this but then you also have to think about that this segment here is also a segment where a lot of customers really tend to have choices in their cars which are a little bit more you know drawn back and not screaming for attention that much And one more look at the engine, what you cannot see, well it's huge, it's this new V6 twin turbo, but covered in a way that it's hardly to see anything anymore, too bad. Uh, it is not revealed with which exact displacement figure or system the hybrid will come, that will come later. What is sure that they will remain with the long wheelbase version here, so, so far only the long wheelbase that also explains why the car is really that long. So what about the interior? Let's do a famous Autogefühl door closing test. That sounds solid. And then, inside of the doors, well, you know, show cars all about animal hides here everywhere. And well, however, Lexus does offer so-called new locks. That is a leather red. I'm not sure if it's available also on the LS, but should be in the base models, I guess. Wood being used here, and you see the um, how everything is processed here from the build quality is really superb. You can already see and, 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 and also feel that. Then if we continue on to the interior, this is of course trimmed for the most luxurious part that is available. And you can see everything is covered really with leather. Um, however, even in the um, real leather interiors, most of the dashboard parts are usually then also leather red because they are longer lasting. <laughs> Bright interior styling. Here you see the seats are very broad, so even if you're a little bit bigger, it should be no problem to sit on there. I like the uh, wood, the classic wood style on the steering wheel, so that tends to be removed from cars more and more. And I mean, why not go for it? You can already also see the, um, uh, the instruments there, and this is really interesting, and I think not really fitting because. I mean, it's rather a classic layout for the car, but the instruments look like a 90s um, arcade game style, so that does not really correspond to the rest of the interior. But you see, the way is going for the all-digital cockpit, that's coming more and more, for sure. But the rest of the interior, what I see so far, they put a lot of contrast stitches in there. But I think it's overall a good compromise. They got a lot of interesting new ideas. Look at the, how the vents over there, when you, when you go up there with the vents, 
how they come from a broader style to a very close style. And this is a really interesting sculptural element, which really looks like design art for sure. Also, um, for example, we have just seen also the, the automatic lever for the, this small stick to put in the drive gear. There will be a new 10-speed automatic transmission, by the way. 10-speed, wow, never seen so many gears actually in a luxury car. The command of the infotainment system where you see, you see this touchpad there with the Lexus logo on it, this is a little bit complicated. We had that in the Lexus RX already and you can get used to it a little bit, but I think just a touchscreen um, or maybe a fixed MMI terminal would be handier than having this half touch solution. I can also take a seat right here and see um, how the situation looks like. And indeed, the seats offer you a lot of space. Oh wow, although we're on the motor show, it's very silent here immediately because I have also covered the, the, the roof here in Alcantara or microfiber, as you would say it on the meter level. That's really pleasing. And, well, so is that the seat. And the, well, the view to the front, as we have a very long hood, is really limited. And here you can also feel that this car is inspired by the Lexus LC. And you can see the LC right over there, actually. The silver car, which looks very dramatic on the other um, pole there, that is also turning. The LC is this large sport coupe, it would be like, from, like say, for a Mercedes S coupe, it would be the correspond corresponding here. And those two cars here sit on the same platform. And I think I actually do feel it, because the Lexus LS has become sportier now. So a limited view to the front. Actually, it's also not that high. So me with one with 86 or 6 foot 1, um, don't have too much headroom here. And that also stresses the sporty, flat feeling of the car. You always have to find a compromise between offering enough room and comfort and being very sporty. But here, they really thought, okay, let's do it sporty. A little bit strange what they did here on the top of the dashboard, um, where you can activate the snow mode um, to decrease the throttle input. And on the other side, I have the driving mode. So I'm sitting here and then putting here or here to change the driving modes. A little bit strange decision. Um, but other than that, we also have um, very pleasing factors. For example, how we have real metal here on the inside, here forming a sculpture again. Um, there it is. Or also real metal is used here for the shifting pedals. So a lot of great elements. But of course, I mean, this car will be at least 1,000 bucks. So, um, I mean, we can uh, also expect something else there. Well, here, by the way, if you, if you open the, the armrest, Folds, folds up to the side, really interesting, with the USB port as well, two USB ports. A little space on the inside here. Interesting system that we slide up in, in this way. Pressing this button, we can also open the wooden cover here, slow and smooth function for adaptive beverage holders. This was a touch bit I was talking about. And you can also see how um, it affects the infotainment screen. We will soon show you that even more. But I mean, yeah, seating position is Definitely comfortable, but for such a huge sedan, definitely the sporty way they've picked here. So a cockpit overview, and here again, this is my favorite design feature. You use this uh, metal fins, and that they also change the form over out. Again, a very good quality. Also, when you turn knobs, interesting by the way, they don't use any clicking sounds with the volume, but it's just like freely rotating. But, you know, when you turn it, it feels soft in a way. It's a very interesting concept. Oh, well, the analog clock seems a little bit displaced, doesn't it? Maybe they should have just left it out uh, in this case. The infotainment screen really hidden right there. And that's against the current trend in the motoring industry because they usually tend to have it in a seamless way now, integrated flat. Here it's put behind again. And you can see how I can use this touchpad here and again, this one to me, I mean, I've tested so many different infotainment systems and especially for a new user, this one is the worst, um, you know, human machine interface you can have to me. I think it's the most uh, unhandy one. I know there are some Lexus customers who think differently, but you know, just when I have all the, you know, Tesla touchscreen, Audi MMIs and Volkswagen touchscreens and BMW uh, stuff, here, this one here is the one I, you know, have most problems with. You can see it here again when I'm just like, also hear it like bam, 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 bam. 
I feel a little feedback. You can also hear the feedback, basically. Like this clicking sound. Um, that gives you a little bit feeling of what you're doing, but not, you know, the, the best feeling. You can adjust the uh, sensitivity, at least. This, the mirror here looks a little bit strange. I would maybe put a new frameless one and also a lot of functions here. For example, you can probably use this menu and then go left and make whatever you can do with that. Ah, there it is. You can put that is here obviously to to um, you know reduce the glare, for example. We will also have um, here a panoramic view. So you know, it's not on power at the moment, but here you can also open uh, the roof then. So Definitely really interesting as for the interior design, that's for sure. And this is the rear compartment as this could also be used as a chauffeur car. You can see you can fold down the middle part of, of, the, or, you know, of, of the backrest and form artificially two single seats also with a rear seat entertainment system. So there it is, there's the screen you can use and then play your music or videos or pick radio and stuff. And you see, again, there's really a lot of space in there also, especially for the, for, the, for the width. So I can test that and get inside and also leaves me plenty of leg room. However, it's also such a long car. And I mean, this is quite bulky here. So for such a long car, it's not really the most spacious feeling. Usually the um, chauffeur would be on the other side and put the, the co-driver seat all the way to the front. In the middle part, you also have beverage holders, for example, and can control climate stuff. Uh, and so um, you can also fold up the whole thing. And it would look like this, and I can also get to the other seat. Here we go. And yeah, I can really make myself com comfortable here. Headroom-wise, um, yeah, it does exactly fit with my size. One of me is 86 or 6 foot 1. Um, but then, um, oh, above that, I would actually get problems. Here, I'm sure you can fold down this area again. Also have, there we go. Here, for example, probably put the tablet even in here. USB supply again, and then I can also change, for example, put on the relaxation um, upper body and shoulder. Let's, let's test that one if it works. But maybe the, maybe not sure if the car is um, powered for that one. That might be um, the problem here. Ah, oh, there it, uh, it does come. So I activate the seat massage you now. And you guys want to continue the tour of the motor show without me, maybe? Because I could take some rest here and, uh, you know, get the seat massage ready, thinking about something else. Um, we'll have a short break, okay? I'll be back soon. <laughs> hey, you want me to continue, right? So the new generation of the Lexus LS, it promises a sportier ride, also with a lower center of gravity. And definitely this new platform that is shared with the LC500 also gives a hint of uh, that they want to have the sporty approach. Yet a very interesting design on the interior. So you get most dramatical design for this segment on the exterior and a very central one on the interior. The infotainment um, control I do not really prefer, that's for sure. And they also do not offer any animal skin alternative. That's definitely also a negative point. The engine, however, promises new power, but also moves away from the standpoint which was unique for Lexus, that they would still be offering a naturally aspirated engine. That's obviously gone right now. What do you think about the Lexus LS in the new generation, here the LS500? Give me your thoughts in the comments here with Autogofuel, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. This seems rather flat here for a big SUV and, well, indeed it is, because this one is the Audi Q8 concept and you could say it's really far from a concept, but it's actually not because already in 2018 they want to introduce this one here as the co-pay version 
of the Audi Q7, the full-size SUV. And here in Autoco Fuel, we will also take a look at this one here from the exterior and the interior with Thomas. Let's go. Here we go with a very massive front transformer style and it is said that this front will really come for the Q8 and um, well, I mean, you could say it's poser style, it's too much, what, what do you think? Um, you know, it has something, something very spectacular for sure. To me, I think it would be a little bit too much. Then there's a new LED light signature. This will surely not come into reality as it is here right now. That's more for show purposes. But the front grille will probably will. This is also better with an e-tron model because it's a plug-in hybrid with about 60 kilometers range of purely electric. Um, then it's again the question if it will come in this way rather with the normal combustion engines. But we know there's already a Q7 e-tron. Maybe it will also feature this plug-in hybrid in this variant then as well. What do concept vehicles always follow? Well, <laughs> two large rims and also two slim side mirrors. Probably the side mirrors will become bigger and the, rear, the, in, the um, inch size of the rims will become smaller. This is 23. Wow. That's huge, with carbon ceramic brakes on the inside, by the way. So this will probably be a little bit smaller. And then we got a lot of interesting design lines here, for example, here two lines. This one here is dissolving a little bit. The lower part and the accentuations with the aluminum, very sharp side mirrors. And then this is the really interesting part. The roof line is falling a little bit to form this coupe styling. You will lose room on the interior for that for sure. This is more about the styling than if you want you know, more versatile car, you will stick with the Q7. But it's the same then with the BMW X5 versus X6. Really a lot in, in, in common the cars, but then you know the roof line is falling and that makes this sportier look. And the question is always here with this SUV coupe style trend. Well, it doesn't really make sense, but people obviously demand it also to have uh, you know, a more evil, more cool look also for a big SUV. Would it be something for you? The rear looks a little bit unharmonic to me. I mean, we have this side, this rear wing here, then there's this attractive light strip that I really like, but then there's a gap, there's a step, another step. And, you know, I would like it if it would be a little bit rather harmonic or what what you think so this could come in the middle part but the real tail lights they should you know they will probably be a little bit bigger in the real version and if we look down a massive diffuser here we can see and well just a small exhaust but at least they didn't put any fake exhaust on that one here so where's the door handle well this is the door handle the audi logo because when i put the finger on here, whoa, there it is, <laughs> then the door jumps open, so interesting new mechanism, um, not really sure if this will uh, come into effect for the serious car, but it's a show effect here for sure, and you see when you're standing in front of the door, it's maybe not the best solution. Then the first look into this interior with a textile, also with sharp angles everywhere, also on the inside of the doors, microfibers used, I really like that, and a clean and cool look with this aluminum style here. Everything also aligned with the exterior and I'm also exclusively allowed to take a seat right in here in this concept car. Of course, this is not a um, really serious build, um, but it's really interesting. We see some of the elements that we already know, but also something that is completely new. For example, less and less buttons, for example, capacitive buttons right here at the dashboard. And the same also will account for the steering wheel. So we have less and less real buttons we can really push. Also the virtual cockpit that will then also come in the new generation. And a lot of microfiber used, for example, on the on the ceiling here from the inside. So we like that. And first view into a frameless mirror. And here we go. This is the new interior, how Audi conceives it. Horizontal lines definitely with new vents and this one is here all seamless so 
it's really one straight line with a new digital cockpit here and it goes further with for example here for the climate controls um, you can all touch that use it as a touch screen um, really looking forward to how this one will be intuitive or not then the automatic lever here this one looks quite familiar but everything really futuristic definitely and what i've told you earlier with the steering wheel capacitive buttons no real buttons you can press here um, also the start and stop engine button and you can also take a look at the um, demonstration of this cockpit. Uh, this car also promises augmented reality for example that those um, that those arrows for example will be then displayed also on the road as we know from the Volkswagen ID concepts. So um, a lot of futuristic elements here but nothing that you could say oh this, this couldn't work in, in real time. Maybe it's a little bit too much, but if they maybe mix it a little bit, so some old, some new elements, I think this could relatively uh, work quite well. Um, you have to get used to it, but of course your feedback is the most important one for me and also of course for Audi. Audi shows the car that you also tell them if that's maybe the dream for you or if it's maybe too much, so put it that one in the comments. So what about the rear? Of course the roof line is falling and how will that play an effect? Well, the two single seats here, very interesting and well, still have enough headroom with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 2, so um, doesn't do any air damage because it's really like pulled out, so you don't lose too much headroom. So this car can still be versatile, and I mean, as you have those two single seats here, I mean, less people can drive with the car, but um, especially for European and US purposes, you don't see too many people in one car anyway, so this could theoretically still work and of course a very futuristic inside again. By the way, nice cloth being used here on the back part of the seat. What about the trunk? So here we go. And the height is a little bit reduced because the batteries are placed below, but other than that, you're still quite versatile. You just lose a little bit of the height right here due to the coupe concept, but I mean, for a coupe sporty looking car, still reasonable in space. I would have imagined maybe there's a little bit less. Again, not really in the height, but I mean, for suitcases, this still works pretty well. Another conclusion, Audi Q8. At the moment we still say concept and it's a very daring concept for sure and very powerful. If it's too much or if it's just right and great, that is up to you and we will discuss it in the comments because Autogrefu is also your number one community to discuss cars for sure. The interior will work as it, we see it right now, also very futuristic. Interesting ideas and the question is if we are already really up to this. What I find quite positive is that we still have a lot of room on the inside so you don't lose too much. They have um, you know, created a design that is looking small on the outside on the one hand and flat but still leaves room on the inside. Of course, it doesn't look small with the huge front. And um, new Audi head of design, Mark Lichter, he's been there now for a couple of years. This is one of, their, one of his first brand new concept cars and it looks a little bit like the Q2 also because this one is already carrying a little bit of his design language. So we will see more of this design language also with other Audi models. Give me your feedback and see you at the next car. The Volkswagen ID Bus. This is a new concept for a pure electric vehicle, a van, which is about 5 meters long or 16 foot 3, and that is being shown here in Detroit at the Motor Show. And we will tell you everything about that on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're going to take a deep look on the design, front, side and the rear. We'll check out what's to await in the interior and all of the functionality and the range. and. This is actually not too far from a real car. We will tell you more about it. What about it actually? How far is it from the future, which is real at the moment right now? I can tell you there are a lot of interesting aspects about this very iconic car, which is reminding us of the T1, the first VW bus, as we say in Germany. And that comes to the name of the concept car bus. Let's go with the details. In the front, the very special thing is that it really looks like the T1, the very first generation of the Volkswagen Transporter. And second thing is, 
that this new design language, also from the Volkswagen ID, the compact van that we shown you earlier, um, this one also resembles here with this LED light signature and also the lower part as there's no open front grille because there's no combustion engine obviously, but you have let's say a fake front grille also with light signature. So that's a key design element and also the two color scheme which was also present with the very first vehicle and this really cites the past. In the side profile, as I said, just below 5 meters or 16 foot 2, 16 foot 3 is the length of that vehicle and quite similar to the normal T6 for example and that will leave a lot of space on the inside. But the electric vehicle concept is that the way that the batteries are really placed alongside here and therefore this vehicle concept is especially suitable for an electric car and you can place so many batteries in the underfloor there that this can have a maximum range up, up, up to 600 kilometers in the European cycle or 260-270 miles in the US cycle for the electric vehicle range and will have massive power so about five seconds of acceleration only for 0 to 100 or 0 to 62 miles an hour and also 370 horsepower if you calculate the system power with all-wheel drive. Also interesting you cannot see it right here but under the front axle, this concept here, or that's the thought behind it, will have an inductive charging possibility. That means you can, for example, use a parking spot where there's an inductive charging possibility in the, in the ground, and then you can charge wirelessly. Design-wise, you can see there's this horizontal line which goes all the through and even more separates the two color scheme. Also the side mirrors disappeared and are used by cameras that then display an image inside of the vehicle. And the rear looks very modern also with those very slim and horizontally stressed taillights. This is really different from the original bus and it's really funny that the Volkswagen ID bus, B-U-Z-Z, -Z, sounds like Bus B-U-S in Germany, which you also call this bus, the small bus or micro bus. The Volkswagen logo is really huge and also illuminated. I think it's again a nice way to play with light. And well, what is the final name? It's of course not decided yet, but I'm quite sure that this vehicle will also become reality and maybe something even more. You have realized those sensors here, also in the front, here and here, and those are those 360 sensors for the autonomous drive because this vehicle is also meant to be an autonomous vehicle and Volkswagen says in 2025 this one here can go fully autonomous up to a speed of 130 kilometers an hour and um, we will have to really see if that would work. We have heard that the Volkswagen ID the compact van should be in 2020 ready and when this one will be driving 2025 in an autonomous way I think the real release date will be between 2020 and 2025, but we can also find out more about that in our different interviews we will have here with the executive members. We are not allowed yet to look in the inside as in stepping in the inside, but we can also really look from the outside to the inside before we come to our interview part. And here we can see, first of all, sustainable materials are used, for example, wood that also in the current T6 or Volkswagen Crafter comes from certified wood sources, for example also inside from Euros, uh, Europe, then fabric seats and obviously taken our concerns seriously because in an electric vehicle you have to use fabric seats or leather red seats to make it an all sustainable concept. You can equip this car with eight seats, um, but it's also possibly like this, for example, with a lot of space on the inside. You have a flexible setup, also rails on the ground that you can slide the seats or fold them flat. So that leaves a lot of space, LED lights on the top to have this lounge look, so it will look amazing at night as well. There we go. And also in the front cockpit, what can we see here? <laughs> this uh, dancing figure in the front, really nice detail but also horizontal stress, not many buttons. Everything will be either controlled with this iPad there in the middle part. The steering wheel will slide out if you drive the car yourself or slide in if you are in the autonomous mode. And everything else will also be controlled, for example, by augmented reality. So you will have a head-up display, but then, for example, see the arrows of the GPS in front of the road. So there's an optical or visual illusion then. This will be a very interesting concept and so um, also eye tracking modes can be used and a lot of stuff is then reduced again. So you have more features but then reduced in the 
command that you can also use, for example, voice command, and that it doesn't get too complicated. However, if that's in autonomous mode, you will have plenty of time to revive all of this infotainment. Now we're joined by Jürgen Stackmann, Head of Marketing and Sales for Volkswagen. And we know that Volkswagen, especially in the US era, has a problem with sales at the moment. So can this concept also, looking into the future, solve this problem again? Well, it's not only this concept that will solve, uh, not the issue, but actually will help us to rebuild Volkswagen to the strength that we want Volkswagen to have in this country. Uh, the year 20. 20, 2017 is a magic year for the Volkswagen brand. Uh, we're coming through a difficult period uh, that you have mentioned, uh, but we have a clear mind um, ahead. We are launching two significant cars for the country that are real American cars. The, 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 the long Tiguan, which basically is a compact SUV, as Americans call it, uh, and the Atlas, uh, which is a fantastic car for the American family and household, which will make the, the brand really relevant for the American uh, families. The ID bus that we've brought to D Detroit is probably the most American concept uh, you can imagine on, on an electric platform. It combines what America uh, actually has, has decided to be the love affair with the Volkswagen brand, the microbus, it's the shape that actually has defined the brand in this country with the most advanced and most uh, sustainable uh, uh, energy s uh, solution that we can offer. It's fully electric, it will never have a combustion engine, it's fully connected, it's ready for autonomous drive, it looks fantastic, uh, and it actually offers space for eight people in a tremendous way. Uh, and we believe that the combination of a very powerful emotional uh, design combined with a fantastic usability and sustainability is, is, a, is, a, is a concept uh, that actually will reconnect uh, America to Volkswagen. So at the moment, um, you know, the, the current vehicle, the, the T6, is not available in the US and it's very popular in Europe. Could this then be a world Volkswagen transporter, but a world car that is similar for all of the markets? This actually is not yet uh, fully decided. Uh, what we're showing here is the second uh, sort of version of our M modular electric platform, uh, sort of a new platform that we've just started to uh, design and, and uh, develop uh, last year. The first car that we showed was our ID in Paris, a European concept, uh, compact in size, golf shape and golf size with the inside of a Passat. This obviously will probably uh, suit uh, two or three Passats on the inside. So it's a car that actually is made for a country that loves big cars, uh, loves big concepts, high seating position, seating position uh, but actually loves to get engaged emotionally with the brand it's, it's, it's driving. Uh, so this is the car that actually is meant to be a success in America but I'm really convinced and we are convinced that the idea, uh, idea of an ID buzz could be a global concept uh, and we'll see actually uh, sort of after, after Detroit Motor Show how the reaction globally uh, on this concept really is. So Larsen F3 uh, watching the small Volkswagen ID, the compact van, let's, let's call it that way, you told me it's not that far from reality, actually. And what about this one? How far is it from reality? Of course, not every feature will come into a serial model, but how far is it from the real model? It is real, and so far, that actually, we, we have used the same electrical platform. So basically, it's feasible to do the car. Uh, whether actually the car can, can, can come to life actually will be decided essentially by our customers. So we're really eagerly to get uh, sort of comments uh, from, from our, our customer base. Would they like to, us to, to really proceed uh, with that car? It's actually not a car that actually will be the first one on the electric platform, but it's an idea that we can bring uh, to, to the market. And obviously we have committed ourselves to bring a whole range and family of cars on, a, on an electric platform. This is one idea, very American, but uh, I think everybody who looks at the car just wants to drive it. Uh, so it could be a global idea. Let's let's see uh, actually what what the what the reaction says after the show. So 2020 will be for the compact Volkswagen ID. Is there any roadmap what's ahead then? For example, for this one, maybe a year later, just approximately. Well, obviously we do have a roadmap, but we don't know, don't want to talk about that. We will not talk talk about this. Uh, we we have committed ourselves to launch a family of cars, uh, not only one car. Uh, this could be an example of that. It's basically showing the the spread and the and the spectrum that we that we could offer. Actually, the customer will decide whether this is going to be one car of the family or not. I personally think it has to be one. So you heard it, man. It's your choice. So show us already in the comments what you think. Then we'll also give the feedback back and then maybe Jürgen Stackmann decides when he will launch this car for real. Do Thank so. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's excellent.
With Klaus Bischoff, Head of Design Volkswagen, we have recently spoke about the design evolution in the Volkswagen brand and this here seems to be the very next step, but again citing the past. How did you come up with the idea that this one here really looks very familiar? Yeah, of course, uh, it is relatively close at hand if you consider to, to come up uh, with a new product that, that features room for eight uh, and all that on a very small footprint with a high seating position to, to uh, capitalize on uh, the famous T1 bus that, uh, of course, is a uh, Volkswagen icon. And we took elements uh, like the facial expression, you know, this, this famous V uh, shape and the color separation and uh, redefined uh, this into uh, a very futuristic uh, car yeah, that features uh, yeah, a big range and uh, you can house, as I said, eight persons. Uh, and uh, travel in style and uh, have fun yeah, uh, for us, uh, an offer that uh, is natural for a brand like Volkswagen. Quite often you say that electric cars are you know, not that beautiful, maybe more have you know, also different proportion of functionality and design. Is this one here a concept that can really also stress, stress the emotional part of an electric vehicle? Yeah, I, I uh, absolutely do think so, uh, due to the fact that uh, you see here's something that stands out, is very characterful, very nice in proportion, yeah, will, will enlight uh, uh, the, the roads, yeah, everybody will take a smile when, when the car is passing by. And, and that is something that uh, redefines also mobility in a very sympathetic way. So what's your design roadmap? You, we see some um, of the key elements, for example, the headlights are also similar to the Volkswagen ID concept, the compact mm -hmm. van, let's, let's take it that way. So there are also some things that could be becoming maybe the core VW design elements. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we do transport, uh, transport this, this unique features that we showed the first time with the ID, also in the ID bus. And uh, you might see this also on uh, other family members, because there's a lot to come. What is um, your favorite part here, design-wise, from, from this very car? Uh, I'm in love with, uh, with the whole thing. Uh, it's hard to tell any details. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, this is uh, yeah, a very modern, a futuristic, typical Volkswagen uh, with a genet genetic code from, from the past uh, that leads into the future. So would this also be your personal pick maybe for your leisure car in the future? Absolutely. Uh, I would dream to, to uh, drive with a serious production car every day. So I think this is a good hint that this car will probably become reality, that Klaus Bischof himself can drive the car at least. <laughs> and then maybe some more people, of course, like you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And especially in the spotlight here in Detroit is also Hinrich Wöpken, because he is the head of Volkswagen America. And maybe you can tell us, is this the fairy tale that can free Volkswagen again from the chains of the past? Yeah, I, I think we are all excited. Um, the bus uh, has been the icon of the brand back to the uh, 50s and uh, especially 60s and 70s. Um, the uh, bus is, so to speak, the other end of the uh, ID family, which we started to launch at the Paris Motor Show back uh, in September. So the ID was the smallest, and the, on the other end of the family, so to speak, is, uh, is the bus. Um, uh, we believe that uh, this uh, it's a concept car, and of course we're using the exhibition to test the taste, uh, what the audience is saying, what the journalists, what the uh, customers, dealers are saying. Uh, but uh, the um, fascinating element about this product is that we are able, uh, demonstrating this, to combine emotion with functionality. It has, uh, that sometimes is in contradiction as you know. And if you uh, look really deep into this product, it's fantastic uh, how emotional this product is and at the same time delivers a lot of customer value. So the car goes almost in five seconds from 0 to 100 or kilometers or 0 to 62 miles an hour. Is that maybe 
I say it's as a sports car. <laughs> yeah, we didn't disclose the the, de the, the data yet. Uh, in general, electric mobility uh, is uh, high torque, is uh, fun to drive. Um, and therefore, also such a large car will have with electric mobility, with electric drives, of course, also a lot of uh, fun to drive, uh, especially paired with great stabilization and suspension systems. Uh, for, for the driving dynamics, uh, Volkswagen, I believe, has a very strong position traditionally anyhow. So we have um, did several reviews also on the current T6, for example, which is hosted by Volkswagen commercial vehicles. And the American customers always tell us, you know, why can't we get that one here? You know, we loved it in the past and we cannot get it at the moment. Is this, um, you know, did you listen to the customers? Is this the reaction that this one then will again be a global bus? That's why we are here. We are trying to find out exactly what you just asked. Uh, is it a global product? Is it more regional product? Uh, it depends very much how much the functionality and uh, the customer advantages are, are valued. Uh, to, to bring a new product into the market has very much to do with volume and scales and competitiveness. And in order to find that out, how, how ambitious are we on such a product, we, we are showing it to you and to the audience to find out whether we would bring this to a positive business case. So as a last question, you know, I'm playing the American customer now and you say, I love big SUVs. Why should I switch from a really heavy, rugged SUV to this one? Great question. I can tell you, uh, the, especially this, the, the command seat position, the, the, functional, the, the room space functionality, these are elements which are uh, highly regarded uh, with SUV architectures. Uh, if you look at that car, uh, there are some elements in there which is even more. So um, now the question is whether this more is appreciated by the customers. We're trying to find this out during this week. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And now our first conclusion, the interior part will come later. We will link it in the video description because we can visit the interior in the later stage. And so you should also check that on as soon as it's online. But what we have seen so far, I think it's really a great quotation of the past, combining the emotional appeal of the very first transporter then with a new concept. And if a vehicle is suitable to be a fully electric vehicle, it is surely this one, if you consider you know, the space you have on the inside, and also looking at the design on the outside. So this one here can combine the emotional appeal of a very iconic car with a modern vehicle. And I think it's very promising also what we've seen from the outside to the inside because you have a lot of flexibility inside. And of course, I would be looking forward to your feedback, what you think so far. Already recorded on the CES in Las Vegas, the Chrysler Portal concept moved also to the Detroit Motor Show, so this is the video here we already recorded in Las Vegas. The Chrysler Portal! One of the brands that is not that often featured in an auto crew is Chrysler, and the reason is we cannot get those vehicles in Europe, but we are in the US today at the CES, and that gives us the exclusive chance to cover a Chrysler vehicle and we have this new concept, the Chrysler Portal. And Matt Dunford is joining us, he's the exterior designer for this concept vehicle and obviously it has a lot of interesting features, maybe you can fill us in on those. Yeah, so uh, the first thing you'll notice about the Chrysler Portal concept is the actual door system itself and that's highlighted by what we call the name of the car, Portal, right? And uh, it was actually, uh, it, it kind of started its infancy in some of the inspiration and some of the uh, information we collected about millennials and we found that you know inner cities are growing very heavily and with that tight spaces are going to become even tighter so we we realized maybe your traditional door system would not function as efficiently so we came up with the dual sliding door feature which you see on the driver's side um, and that really enables us to get in and out of the car in those tight spaces efficiently and as at the same time we shifted that structure that you usually find um, on the car into the door so that structure not being there really kind of helps you get into the car even easier for tall guys like me and you, you know. 
we soon step over to the other side and take a look also at the interior. But first at the exterior, see that um, becomes quite common with electric cars, um, especially at the front. I mean, there's no real grill or any, you know, everything is really covered, streamlined alone, also with the, with the alloys, for example. Also, I think those are supposed to be like anti-rolling resistant tires, right, for that to reach that. Um, it's about 250 miles of electric range, fully electric vehicle, so 400 kilometers of range approximately. Um, I mean, that's also a task for you that you can work together with the engineers to make those things happen. Yeah, yeah, usually uh, sometimes in design, you know, the engineers and designers kind of clash, you know. But on this project, we came together and we worked really well together to come up with viable solutions that made sense from a styling standpoint, but also functioned from an engineering standpoint and functioned efficiently. And that was key here. So what you thought about when uh you had the idea, or maybe an engineer say, "Oh, let's remove the, you know, <laughs> the, the the side mirrors." Yeah. I mean, it looks, um, let's say, unique. So, um, what what do you think about it from a design standpoint? From a design standpoint, it kind of breaks some of the norms, right? Um, and what it does is it, it kind of highlights the fact that now we have the technology to produce uh, the views that we need to see in and around the car more efficiently. Let's say your traditional uh, rear view mirror, and that's really what we're showcasing here, and that's what our the Samsung 360 camera does. You know, it's got 180 degree uh, vision on both sides, so it captures a 360 degree view, which means there's no blind spots anymore on the side of your car. So it really helps the driver understand the situation around them. And you see that then in the in the display in the car then though, yeah. the which. Yep, and then that feeds into the display, which shows everything the driver needs to see, and the passenger can see it too. So, so let's switch to the interior. And now we'll take a look at the interior and also with another expert because for the interior is responsible, responsible is Sydney Jewett. And um, thanks for having us here. And, and I've heard already that uh, cars a lot of working, for example, with facial recognition to also realize, you know, what I'm maybe up to, who I am, music and stuff. And so how does it work? Well, that part is best explained on the user experience, Buck. There's a camera here that recognizes your face and sets the profiles. Uh, music, ambient lighting, heat, like a cold, hot and cold temperature that you like. And so as soon as you get into the vehicle, all of your presettings are there because of that facial recognition. There's also a camera on the, uh, on the front of the dash there too that has similar properties. So what we see is a very open concept. It's a it's a lounge atmosphere, and um, also you can see we can slide the, the seats here around and yes. in flat bottom. It's of course because it's an electric vehicle. There's no need of a of a transmission tunnel that leaves us more space then again. And um, so I mean you're target targeting millennials with this car also, and they might want to change their lifestyle from time to time. So how is it possible with this car? Exactly. Well, it's not just millennials. We think that everybody, although millennials is the main focus here with their families, we think everyone likes to have a say in how they use their space. And the idea is that you can buy one seat initially and then upgrade to up to six. So imagine you're a small business owner, you're 20 or 30 years old, maybe you really only need one seat and the rest of the space you use to help build your business. But you know, life is what happens when you're making other plans. Maybe you meet someone, fall in love, they're going to want a seat too, right? So you can add that second seat and maybe if you have children and your family grows. But the best part about this is we think that millennials, well we know they're saddled with student debt, especially in this country. They may not have that same amount of expendable income early on in their lives like their families, their uh, parents did. So the idea is that the car can grow with you at different stages of your life and also at different income levels of your life. So the way you can really customize the space is that you're able to use the open cabin without the seats however you choose. We also imagine that if say you're an average bike rider, we imagine modules could click into the floor and hold your bike sturdy and you can use all that space yeah, for that lifestyle. So we imagine great opportunities commercially um, with ride sharing, Uber, those kinds of relationships could be great. Um, and also, we know that people who are going to be very interested in autonomous are the elderly, people who can't get around. So something that's big and open and spacious, easy to get in and out of, we see huge potential for that market as well. And we can see um, display-wise, it's very interesting also. Um, so there's no real head-up display that is projected into the screen. But we've got this really wide screen concept yeah. where you yeah. yeah, where you look upright anyway, basically. Then. Exactly. So, it's a different concept um, than with other manufacturers at the moment. 
And then I think it's well, it's it's a contrasting integration also with the white dashboard. Yes, so it's. You don't even need me. You're just yeah, yeah. perfectly yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it looks really, really, really nice. And um, and I think the like the the center entertainment yeah. screen is it more like for the co-driver then? That's uh, or. Okay, so the idea behind the high mount panoramic screen is that it offers all of the elements that the driver needs easy in a heads up display. You know, everything that they need, the speed and maybe the charging, power, things like that, is immediately right in front of them. So it's very, you know, that's a, that's a really nice position, no eyes moving, you know, it's for safety reasons. But then the idea of it being expansive and panoramic is so everyone in the vehicle can kind of see what's going on. It's not just that small little cockpit anymore. So it's more of a communal experience. And at the center stack, that houses a lot of the touch instruments that the driver would use to make lots of things work throughout the cabin. But also, it can obviously, it's very approachable. You know, it's in the middle there, flat, and very accessible to the passenger as well. So we're trying to open up the space and make it feel more communal, and also, at the same time, very artful with the technology integrated into these um, very fluid and sculptural forms. It doesn't feel like that techy, cold, square screen. We want the technology to be the sculpture and the sculpture to be the technology, like a seamless integration, like you said. Maybe as the last question um, about the materials being used at Autogofu, we are always uh, also into sustainability. Is it leather red or are you still using a uh, real animal skin on the seat here? Uh, no, the, this is a synthetic leather, leather and it can be made um, from recycled materials. We know that they do exist out there, so that's always something we're looking at. Is materials that can give you that feeling of the tradition, but you know they're more forward reaching than what we're using now. And you know, people often talk about this light open space, is it practical for families? If there's a way to do it and people love it, well, we'll do it. You know, so we want to see how people react to that light, open feeling space, and then we feel that this very neutral space really speaks to a generation that enjoys a subtle and sophisticated palette, which is a little bit of accent color, something you won't tire over. You know, most people don't reach for a bright orange sweater every day, but you might reach for that gray or black sweater three times a week. So that's the same kind of idea here, how you would dress yourself. It's like kind of getting into your favorite go-to sweater. So that's our feeling on the palette. And we think if we keep it subtle and sophisticated, it'll reach a really broad audience. Excellent. Very interesting. Thank you so much. And another very interesting feature is displayed here on this special open model because you can see it here on the head restraints. There are special speakers and this is solving a problem I also have myself at home because, for example, my wife doesn't like my trance music. But I don't like her, you know, relaxing love music or something like that. And so we sometimes fight then in the car. But then here's the solution. Every passenger gets his or her own music and Panasonic, also, also the Panasonic guys actually sitting in the car at the moment, they say they have solved this problem and they can create a sound cloud for every single passenger so four people in the car can listen to four different styles of music. And now let's test this system and I got uh, music running here, it's Eminem at the moment and um, those speakers really just clear it from my seat, you can hear it here. And also, when I put the microphone somewhere else, for example, near to the co-driver seat, you don't hear so much from it, actually. That's, um, that's the key. And I can also switch the seat. And here, I, I don't hear that music from the front very loudly. See it here? Difference again. But I can also uh, play music then again on the, uh, on the other seats here in the rear. So, um, can you put um, the, the music on for the rear seat here as well? Here, let's see. So, let's see here, personal. Ah, there it is, there it goes. Here. There it is, so I'm hearing the music right here. Of course, there's also the sound from the fair around here now, so um, it's not like the real world test, but it basically works to have the different kind of music per each seat and it could be a solution. We will have to test it sometimes maybe in a very clear and um, silent surrounding when all four are really pushed up if that still works. But so far I think very promising concept. 
So what do you guys think about the Chrysler Portal? I think it's a very interesting concept and surely maybe one of the most interesting here we've seen at the CES. I mean, from the exterior, we got a design that is, um, let's say, there's actually one design trend in the electric branch at the moment, you know, obviously without the front grill and so, and then making everything streamlined and in the inside and lounge atmosphere. So it resembles a little bit each other, but it's also dependent on the building structure of the car. And it also, in a way, makes sense to build the car in that way. And I think we've seen a lot of very interesting ideas with the car. and. It's obviously nothing which you say, oh, we have to wait 10 more years to really put it on the road. Every technology that is in this car can actually be rolled out pretty much instantly. So I also think that this should come relatively close to a possible serial model. This will be even more interesting. Give me your feedback and tune in again for Auto Gefühl. Mercedes is showing here in the Detroit Motor Show the new E-Class Coupé. Here on Autogefühl, the number one resource for in-depth car reviews and the number one community to discuss cars with Thomas, we've already shown you the E-Class sedan and the T-Model, the Estate, also as a E43 version, for example. This one here, the E400, will tell you soon more about the engines. In general, let's take a look at the Coupé version that is on a new platform. This is a true E-Class Coupé now was a little bit different before. We'll tell you everything about the deals and exterior, interior. No driving experience today. I'm so sorry, but that one will soon to follow. It's already scheduled. You will all get this here in Autoc Fuel. Let's go now with a static preview. The E-Class Coupé will come with LED headlights from Series Production, just the multi-beam LED as we see it here now with, um, you know, for the high beam special stuff. That will then be optional in general. The trim level is a little bit different um, if you compare it to the sedan because the Coupé comes either in the Avant-Garde or in the AMG line package you can, you can go for. This one here is the Avant-Garde, you see it here in this diamond pin grille, it would be rather my favorite also with a stronger lower end. You know, the different difference are not that huge actually, but you can switch it around a little bit. The avant-garde is already a little bit sportier and the AMG line then again a little bit more aggressive. 4 meters 82 or 15 foot 8, the total length of that vehicle means it's 10 centimeters shorter than the sedan version. However, 20 centimeters longer than the predecessor. And the reason is this is here really on the E-Class platform now. That's also you now more logical choice for sure. Before it was you know a CE mix and you know there's a C-Class Coupe now and um, so they have the E-Class Coupe. I will also ask um, one of the uh, one of the board members of Mercedes soon about this one here in our interview. Other than that, it comes with bigger alloys already. For example, 19 inch in the AMG line. Those ones here are the optional 20 inch, so even bigger a premium. So special thing here about the coupe is, of course, here the frame around in the coupe style, and it's a true coupe as it is a four, uh, sorry, a two door car, of course. Sometimes there are also four-door coupés and then there's always a discussion, is it a coupé or not? Here, definitely one. And you see the roof line is really falling dramatically. That will reduce the headroom on the inside. But this car is really about, you know, the elegant appearance, for example, from the outside. And surely a very beautiful piece of automotive art. Just a few design lines you see. No sharp design lines, more central. You know, the, the bow here is on the height of the door handles. The door handle has a symbol here with a mobile phone. It will can be opened just with a key serving as a mobile phone. Other way around, the mobile phone serving as a key. And then it continues all the way here to the big shoulder. So, um, and we'll soon come to the rear. Really beautiful car, isn't it? I have to admit that I do not like the current sedan taillights. So for example, with the E-Class limousine, they look a little bit, you know, clumsy. But this one here, you know, the taillights, with the coupé, it's the same than with the C coupé. They are horizontally drawn, look very modern, and I really would prefer that one. So that would, for me, be actually the main reason to go for the coupé. So for this very coupé, you will get a four-cylinder diesel and a four-cylinder petrol engine, and the E400, as it is here right now, that would be also, you know, my car to go for, because this one here, six-cylinder with 333 horsepower, so it's not the most exaggerated one, but, you know, 
quite good for performance already. You know, you're above five, uh, just around five seconds in the acceleration then, and this will surely be enough. And later on, there will also be a powerful one, no E43, no E63. My guess at the moment would be so-called E50, then with about 400 horsepower at a later stage special for the Coupe version. Let's get inside and of course this coupe door will open very wide and also has a frameless glass as we used to from a coupe. Wow, that really opens very wide. Have to see if you can well have a huge parking spot for that one. Then also wood on the interior here, nice color styling for sure. This is the avant-garde trim, as I said earlier, but this was optional with the animal skin package. The good thing about the EcoPe is that with the avant-garde line you get a basic trim of cloth on the inside of the seats and on the outside the leatherette called Artico in Europe or MB Tex in the US. And the AMG line, which we'll also show to you very soon. This one comes with microfiber called Dynamica on the inside of the seat. And again, Artico or MB Tex on the outside. And those are very sporty, climate friendly, you know, for the planet and also for yourself, because you don't sweat on it. And also very sustainable materials. And so a great choice for the standard version. And very interesting info. So first time today, I just talked to a product expert. If you want so, you can request at a Mercedes dealer that you can also get a leather red steering wheel. So a leather free interior is possible on request with Mercedes, uh, fully leather free. So very good that they offer that one. So um, the seat can be controlled right here. I can also move it further down. Ah, oh, that's the way, yeah. <laughs> also the seating area in the front and the legs can be lengthened. There it is. Um, <laughs> It's easier for me when I close the door a little bit, then I can better control those seat controls. Yeah, there we go. So you have a lot of room, and that's definitely the difference to a C Coupe. A C Coupe feels really sportier, more compact, of course. This one here with the full space of an E Class interior. You can already see it right now, special for the E Coupe, if you compare it to the sedan, are those vents right here. It's a very unique style. When I look at it, you know, for the first time, I'm not sure. Is it beautiful or is it strange? I'm, I'm not sure yet. What, what do you think? And the interesting thing is how, also like how they are fixed. It's like they are flying, but very attached at the same time. Very interesting feeling also. But again, a very great build quality. Mercedes has really stepped up the game because Audi was really you now going forward as for the build quality, but what we can see here now, especially in the E-Class, yeah, it's really wow. And um, I've told you earlier as well in E-Class reviews, I mean, the E-Class is very expensive and, you know, they are also more versatile cars, like from the whole building platform. But, you know, when you consider technologies, comfort, suspension, uh, autonomous drive functions, the E-Class is at the moment one of the best vehicles there is, if you, like, combine everything besides price-performance ratio. There are other cars that are better also in a lower price segment, um, of course, if you keep the ratio then. So, steering wheel can also be adjusted here to electronically to all of the four directions. And we have this huge screen we should take a detailed look at. Well, it's surely not a clean interior. That's not what you would call it, although all of the gaps by this Mercedes design language called Central Purity are well hidden. Also, the, info, um, the, the, the from the infotainment, the LED lighting, um, you cannot see it right now here. But in um, our most recent episode, for example, of the um, of the AMG models of the E Class, there you could see the ambient lighting is really awesome. And I mean, look at this Central Design language here. I think so beautiful. Of course, it could be a little bit overwhelming if you more prefer a very clean simple surrounding that's not for you if you want you know a very pompous all the way then also with those special coupe vents here four in the middle and again wood with this central curve this really has a, a lot to it and the screens you can also get the analog setup um, here two digital screens huge ones this is for the infotainment this is for the instruments on the left part this is the optional um, you can get couple of thousand euros extra of course but I have also seen the 
the, the basis, basis version ones with an analog display for the instruments. And then you got a smaller screen, a singer, single smaller screen right here. And that looks also really good, actually. Um, this can be a little bit overdone. It's, you know, showing what the car is capable of. But the very basis uh, set up, I really liked it. It makes the car a little bit simpler, definitely. And that's the same for the sedan and for the coupe, for sure. Other than that, I mean, you could, when you're sitting here, besides of the vents, all the things that you may be in a sedan, just that the coupe is always a little bit lower. There are three suspensions also available, the basis one, then the adaptive one, but they are also a little bit lower, 50 millimeters. And then also, as we know from the sedan, the air suspension optional in the top suspension trim. Such a beautiful car, but one disadvantage for sure. Um, well, you have a help here with the electric sliding function, but you've already seen from the um, from the leg room that was left. Um, it's not really suitable for tall people. The sedan is, and um, the T model, the estate, even more. Here you're also helped by the electric function of the seat, that the seat is sliding back. Um, yeah, so. Well, it does work. I think in that way also a driver could also still sit. Like room here. So it, it does work. I'm amazed that it actually does work. So nice. Um, headroom also because the rear of the of the roof is going up upward a little bit. You see here there's a shade for the panoramic roof. Then we got the, the from the Burmese sound system another speaker. And the sound in the E-Class, um, to me at the moment, class leading, the 3D sound system. Um, sometimes I really feel like I have to just like, get in the car and turn the sound system on. Uh, probably, you know, you know, I'm always someone that could easily go for a base model of a car, but I think maybe we'll just go the base model and then pick the sound system and that's it. <laughs> and here, that's really interesting. They have designed it in a way that the roof is going upward again and so with one meters 86 or six foot one, I can still sit here. That's very interesting and so a good result. I did not expect that. And you know, for a coupe, you sit relatively comfortable in here. You know, um, the seat could be put a little bit higher than maybe if the, it would be suitable for the driver. But other than that, I think a good package for a coupe. Yeah, it's you know, not the package is not the main aspect for that car. But if you want to go with four adults, that does work actually in the middle part there's no seat there's there are some beveled shoulders and also um there are those fixations for the child seats on on both of the seats uh, and also top tethers i see here right now so uh, putting two child seats in the rear would also easily work and you could also heat the seats here and speaking of versatility what can we expect here whoa that's the trunk flips up and of course the loading possibility is limited but doesn't look too different from the sedan. Goes wide in there. Below here, there's some more space. And, well, I mean, it's okay. If you want more space, you have to go for the estate version. And here, you can also release the flipping of the seats. Mm, that's not the most versatile solution. Would be better um, if they flip automatically. Then, and because here, of course, you cannot access the rear seats that well, then you have to go for the front seats, flip the front seat and then get the back seats in your hand. There we go and so this is, I'll show you the microphone. This would be the um, two-third, one-third split but you can also just split the middle part and use it as a ski hatch so that would theoretically also be possible. Yeah, I mean you have to live with the great look the car has, and then child seat test. So I mean child safety test here, child seat as we had earlier, and you see here, that is also, you know, something the other manufacturers should um, consider. Mercedes has said, I mean, look at that, it's always closing perfectly, but then again, if you just have little resistance here, it automatically stops. Well done, perfectly. Other manufacturers should really do it in this way. And now let's compare the second trim, the AMG line I've been talking of. Here with a special matte white finish and the front grille is different. Here you can have the diamond pins. I really love that style. Therefore, I also prefer like E43 models, for example, or C43. 
I love that silver diamond pin grill, so beautiful. Um, too bad we don't have a 3D Mercedes logo here because the sensor is hidden beneath that. And there's the camera, but I would really like this front grill. And then also very strong here with the fake air intakes. There's nothing behind it, it's covered, but it looks good from the distance. So that's the different front with the AMG line. Um, it's really a hard question, which one you should, should you really go for? You know, the Avantgarde or AMG, which one would you pick? Let's take a look at the side profile. Um, maybe we take a look at the other side. This one is, has a better free look for you guys. So, for example, we've got 19 inch rims here and they look bigger than the 20 inch we had on the Avantgarde. Of course, you can get them optionally. This one you can also get from a serial AMG line. They look even bigger than they are. So 19 inch is definitely already enough. This is, by the way, the Edition 1, so when Mercedes launches new cars, there's always an Edition 1, so limited edition from the very first cars you can get. But you can similarly spec that car later on, for example, here with black side mirror caps and also with the black frame here around the car. This is a so-called night package you can always go for, so you can also later spec that one. Door handles again, also good that the shoulders are accentuated in the wide and the matte finish really feels very interesting as well. So would you rather pick the red or the white one? Both are surely very beautiful. Um, there's a really hard contrast um, for this one. Maybe it's a little bit too hard. I was always I would also go, go with for, for um, Thomas Blue than with silver or chrome frames. That would be my pick. And then the rear also here, you can see it in the white version with those taillights horizontally drawn. By the way, those exhaust tips are rather fake. The real exhaust is hidden in there and just a little bit smaller. The big ones are fake. Almost everyone is doing that these days. And the big diffuser, again, that's the E400 in the AMG line. And a look on the inside, AMG line. As I said, the standard AMG trim would be then Dynamica microfiber on the inside and Artico faux leather or MB Tex on the outside. This one again, the special edition one trim with animal skin. But the style you see is a little bit different, even sportier with this carbon fiber trim. A little bit you can also now see from the LED lighting. Those new air vents also correspond a little bit better, I think, with the carbon fiber than with the wood. I have somehow the impression. I mean, in general, I, I like wood in a car. It looks, looks classy, but here the combination is also very interesting. Of course, harsh contrast here also with black and white. Is it too much or is it exactly right? What's your, what's your take on that? And flatted end steering wheel, so flat, flat bottom, also another sporty detail. And the only thing here with the um, black middle console, where you have, you know, all the shiny black surfaces, Ah, I collect so much fingerprints, so I would maybe go for a brighter spec in, in this case. The car does not have power right now to open um, the roof here, but it is a panoramic roof that you can also open. It's just this version then um, optionally available. You can open it right here and then it would also slide back. It's different than with the Escope, and the Escope is fixed. Here you can also open it. And now we are joined by Ola Kalenios, Head of Research and Development for Mercedes, and we want to know what was the path the most research went into for the eCopy? This is the latest family of the family member of the E-Class family. And obviously in this car, it's a mixture about emotions and dynamics. So a lot of work went into the styling to create a car that says, wow, I want this car. But at the same time, we have developed driving dynamics, widened the track and made a car that is really sporty. What was the reason to go for a, let's say, CE mixed platform to go for a real E-Class Coupe now? We launched the uh, C-Class Coupe and the C-Class Cabrio recently and have that segment covered with two great products there. Uh, for this product, we have gone up to the E-Class full segment and also in terms of size, being able to seat four people comfortably. So I think we have the perfect... Uh, I would say, uh, executive uh, coupe here uh, for our customers. And as a last question, engine-wise, I heard there will no be an E63 for the Coupe. Can you tell us anything about the very powerful version that's to come? 
Uh, we uh, don't have an E63 on the cards, uh, but uh, we will have very powerful versions of this uh, coupe uh, for our customers. So there's a lot of choice from top to bottom. Okay, and is the um, EcoPay and uh, now the completed the model line, or will there be any more derivatives for the E Class? Uh, we have one more card up our sleeve. Stay tuned. Hmm, could be something with open top, I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now my conclusion, of course, there are in general cars that make more sense in the segment. A big coupe does not really make any sense, but it is really very, very beautiful for sure. You can think about if you go for a C coupe or for an E coupe, of course, this one here is a little bit longer, but it will also offer you even more comfort and all the features the E-Class comes with, for example, the 3D surround system. The greatest thing is that it also comes with a sustainable seat setup as a standard version, as I said earlier, and you can also optionally get by request a completely leather-free interior. And Mercedes and Tesla are really leading nowadays with offering luxury cars, also with sustainable seating solutions. It just has to be transported even more by the manufacturer, demanded by the customer, and also, of course, told by journalists like us. The interior very luxurious, more space in the rear than I would have expected actually. I mean the car is a little bit shorter than the sedan version and I could very well sit in the rear so I was also positively surprised by that. Definitely one of the dream cars here on the Detroit Motor Show. What's your opinion? Tune in for more cars here with Auto Fuel. Thank you. The all new generation of the Audi Q5 represented to you that one in a very special driving review. If you have missed that so far, please tune into that one. We'll also be linked in the video description. And this very preview from the Detroit Motor Show will be about the Audi SQ5. So this one is the top sports version with six cylinders under the hood. We'll take you on a tour for the exterior, interior, and the engine. Of course, as usual, an article through with Thomas. Let's go. Starting with the front, the S package here for the SQ5 always features a stronger, dramatic lower bumper and also vehicle color at the very lower part. So, this is the top trim then. The camera, by the way, is mounted directly under the Audi logo and it's good that we can keep the 3D Audi rings for that so, optional top LED headlights. And how can you see that this is the US spec version? You will always find those on both sides below the headlights, those yellow the, um, reflectors. And this is mandatory for the US market. We've also told you that in special factory assembly tour that this one is also, you know, one of the exterior specs that is different from the US, for, um, from US to Europe always. Side profile, there's a main design line beginning right here at the hood and it's continued all the way until the rear. So the side profile is not that spectacular, but of course we want to keep a lot of room on the inside. What is rather spectacular are those alloys. The SQ5s come, comes with 20 inch, those ones here are show <laughs> alloys, also 21 inch. Probably I wouldn't go for so huge ones and, you know, maybe losing a little bit of comfort. And speaking of comfort, optionally you can also get the air suspension if you want a very comfortable ride and if you, you know, want to spend the money for that. However, you go with a standard suspension, the SQ5 sits a little bit lower, that still will offer you enough comfort. What's your impression so far from a design standpoint? From even sportier touch you can also get a rear sports differential you cannot see it here but we can take a look at the exterior rear with a very spectacular 3d effect tail lights and only one strange thing is although we have a v6 they are fake exhaust on both sides the real exhaust are hidden underneath and here we have also as in the other mid-size audi models the v6 350 horsepower twin turbo tfsi and this will give you an acceleration 5.4 seconds, 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 62 miles an hour. So, really good performance for sure for that SUV. And um, of course, you can also go with lower spec engines than if you don't go for the SQ5. And by the way, just like you know, this cable salad here, right? That's for the motor show that it 
this car stays with the power. It will look a little bit cleaner for the real vehicle. So what about the trunk? Also the sporty vehicle, you want to put some stuff in there. And the loading sill has a little step in there. Oh, there's a nice Audi back here. Why doesn't have anyone given me that one? Maybe we didn't know. Hey, I'm now selling Audi bags. What about that? <laughs> so, here we go. There's a slider here, right there. Which, uh, rails on both sides, so that works pretty well. Um, this vehicle is also equipped with the air suspension. How do I know that? Well, you can press the buttons right here to lower the car with the air suspension. And there's also a good solution that we can flip the seats right from here, like this, and like this, and there we go. We can help it just a little bit by pressing the seats down. And then we have a really flat area. It also clicks. Uh, we cannot lower that one because the front seat is a little bit further in the back. But you get the picture. You can load things through. So overall a versatile car and also space-wise enough for the most European purposes. And I think also meanwhile for a lot of American purposes. So let's take a look inside. There's a sporty cockpit then with S entry sliders and then you can have those sports seats those ones are the optional seats red contour stitches in the style the good thing is that the audi sq5 standard comes with alcantara seats there's some animal skin mix in that one still but i mean it's better than nothing for sure a standard q5 comes with closed seats at least in germany you always have to check the configuration so i'll turn down the sound here right now um, they got a special carbon fiber look from the audi exclusive I don't really like that they put the Audi exclusive in the show cars because hardly anyone does pick that because it's very expensive. You can see the ambient lighting was here also active, but then Audi exclusive, there had this carbon fiber in the red style. So you can also get a normal plain black carbon fiber, that's possible too. You got the upright seating position, as you know, from an SUV. It's not that the car is too heavy or too bulky, and I think it's a good mix. I really like compact SUVs because, you know, you already get a lot of comfort, the upright seating position, but then you can still get in any parking spot you would um, like to have. Electric control of the steering wheel column is also inbuilt right here. So you got a lot of flexible options and also on the steering wheel you have the Audi single frame grille right here, mirrored as we would see it from the outside. A clean Audi cockpit as we know it, with high build quality, soft and up dashboard, this is the maximum screen you can have. It looks a little bit attached, doesn't it? So with the integration, they didn't figure it out that well yet. Oh, they seem to be in Mexico because, yes, this car is also built in Mexico. We had also a feature about that one where you can check the assembly. And they have the same quality um, measures as they have in any German build plan. So I don't, you know, don't really think that the build quality in Mexico will be any worse. You can see it here everywhere also with the clicking sounds and stuff. Um, the build quality is really superb. Also, when you look at the details, for example, the surfaces here, for example, that we have a surface here. We have this, you know, special line surface. You can really touch that difference. Or the, let's see, 12 volt power supply here. You got this metal knurling around the knob you would usually just find in, in a Bentley or so. So really good build quality, I like that. You will also have optionally the Audi virtual cockpit. The car is not turned on right now here, but you can see it's a screen. There's no analog display, but you can still go for the analog ones and save some money. So that would also be possible. In the middle part, we have two beverage holders. Oh, they are also adaptive, work pretty well. And the armrest is also very solid. Can be slide up. Oh, that's here. Yeah middle slider for a smartphone for example and two usb ports so what about the space in the rear compartment we know from our first review it's not that the q5 is the best vehicle for the package you can see there's some more room in front of my knees headroom wise this is the car with uh, inbuilt panoramic roof so that will lose some headroom and i also heard that um, some of the us specs can only be get uh, get with the roof there and well, some of them are not good, for example, in very hot states, so I think they should work on the packages there. Um, I'm 1 minute 86 or 6 foot 1, so 
that does still fit with the panoramic roof, so that's not a problem. It also has a cover from, uh, from, from, from fabric, so that reduces a little bit the impact from the sun. And that, if you're not living in a very hot state, of course, it lets in a lot of light. That can also be quite nice. Other than that, it's, you know, a comfortable seating position here in the rear, also upright and relaxed. So, um, you know, for a longer trip, there's no problem. In the middle seat, it won't be that comfortable because you have still a very big middle tunnel there. So it's rather for four hours. Now my conclusion, Audi SQ5 here from the world premiere in Detroit. In general, the new Audi Q5 generation is among the best compact SUVs, that's for sure. So overall, a very good performance. It's not a, such a spectacular car, but it's one of the Audi cars that had the best or the most feedback recently. You know, there was just a discussion about the Mexican uh, build quality, but I don't see uh, you know any objections to that. So I'm um, perfectly fine by that basically you can always argue you know about where should actually the jobs be created that's maybe a thing but you know from a customer perspective the only thing you can maybe say I uh, mentioned it earlier why isn't the car a little bit cheaper then if they um, saved some money in the production cost you could argue that the SQ5 version is getting <laughs> ready here you know removing the fingerprints here so very nice detail here again um, you don't really need it, but of course it gives you a lot of performance and power. We will drive it at a later stage for sure, but already the normal Q5 version we have driven in Baja California was really agile. I think that's also the thing. The Q5 in general is a very agile SUV, so that is one of the main factors for sure, already in the basis version. And be sure to check our full driving review of this one here and also follow us from our next coverage want to hear your feedback, of course. Thank you so much. The all new generation of the Audi Q5 has been already an auto fuel as the coupe and also as the Sportback, and you had given us very good feedback on that one. And today, with Thomas here on auto fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars, we're going to take a look at the A5 convertible that will also come out as the A5 and as the S5. So let's check out how this one here performs in exterior and the interior at the Northern American International Auto Show in Detroit. The coverage, as you know it, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front, the new convertible body style is pretty much the same. You see here those dramatic front hood lines that all lead to the front to this huge single frame grill. In this case, we indeed see the S5 version with the six cylinder petrol turbo engine, and the S version also has this stronger lower bumper here and also equipped with the top matrix LED headlights. You do not have to get them, but the form here that they have this sharp blinking eye this one will always remain the same the s line will also look quite alike if you are more interested about the different styles and versions then check the a5 sportback review because we had several cars there where we compared the different versions in the side profile of this mid-size convertible you can see that the a5 is still a design icon because it mainly consists of very few design lines for example the straight horizontal line that goes all the way to the back and of course I think very beautiful also as a convertible. The coupe is maybe the most beautiful one, but when the roof is closed, which we unfortunately cannot do at the moment because the car is not uh, with power um, and we don't have the key, actually, though maybe I would drive away with it when I had the key, you will also see that when the roof is closed, we can also check it out in some preview videos in Audio Fuel, it is flatter now. So the new convertible will come closer to the coupe version with, with a very flat roof. That won't be that good for the headroom for the rear passengers, but however, you know, probably this is also more a two-people car for sure. And one of my favorite convertibles for sure, because this one here can combine sporty riding with a very comfortable ride as well. 
And now we found some of them out to close the roof for us with the key. And here you can see that the roof line is now flatter with this real glass window here. Again, not quite sure what about the headroom. We will test that soon. But here you can already see it has a flatter appearance. And the rear proves again that this car also very well works as a convertible. Those horizontally drained tail lights also with sharp edges. Then again, the small spoiler integrated here for the S5 version and the biggest version difference in the sport trim here is the big diffuser in the lower about and four exhaust pipes with chrome. And well, the sound, you know, we heard it again on the S5 Coupe and also on the S5 Sportback. It's not the most growling sound, but very refined. If you have the red exterior color, there's one reason to go for it, because then you have the corresponding engine layout here for the V6. And in general, the A5 convertible will come with a 2-liter TFSI, so the turbo pressure engine, different horsepower variants, or the 2-liter TDI. And then this one is also available in the S version, the V6 with 350 horsepower, also turbocharged, of course, as we know from Audi. A nice 3D setup here with the Audi rings. One of the very few times I can also touch it, otherwise it would not be a clever idea because it gets too hot. And the performance you can already check out in our driving reviews of the S5 Coupe and the S5 Sportback. Really looking forward to that one here as well. Let's get inside. It's always interesting because those door handles flip up a little bit, old school style. And then there's a wide entry for the front seat. Well, the styling here with the bright leather and the red contrast stitches, hmm, not sure what to think about it. But the good thing is that the A5 convertible itself, at least in Germany and other European markets, also starts just with fabric seats. And then you have to check, um, there's also Alcantara option available. So, a lot of room here for a convertible, and that's the other um, positive aspect about the A5 convertible. You know, there are a lot of very small convertibles, and this one here offers, you know, sporty and convertible open top feeling. At the same time, enough space also for taller people like me. And you can adjust the steering wheel here in every direction, goes quite easily. Compact sporty steering wheel here in the S version with a flat bottom. And look to the front, it's really okay. Um, headroom wise, you will see there's not too much headroom here, but the soft top is pretty thin. Usually it works um, when you're above, you know, even taller than me, when it is 86 or 6 foot 1, then it might get some problems. But as it is right now here, it's still perfectly fine. And by the way, you can also compare the old version generation of the A5 convertible, because we had that one also when we projected also one of the newer ones, the S5. We did a comparison there, so you can check that one as well, and then you can see the differences. Here, for example, what else is interesting, this one is the Audi exclusive interior. There, for example, you can also see the inside of the doors. We got Alcantara, so I would like to see that one more all over the interior. And then you can also see that we got a carbon fiber trim that is special for the S5 version. But in general, you can also get um, aluminum uh, trims here. Also, for the rest of the interior, I would maybe go for that one. Looks looks also sporty, but a little bit cleaner. The carbon fiber, of course, is the racing racing style. Um, but it's also a little bit dark. So, which one would you go for? Cockpit overview. You see features all that we have seen in the other A5 models. Horizontal layout with the air vents. Then again, this is my favorite AC unit. If it would be turned on right now, you can also uh, check out the Thomas AC DJ style, because I like to do that in the Audi cars. With those very high class clicking sounds, and um, also check out the buttons here that you can, for example, control the, where the vents coming from. You will see it then in, these, in the screen, and again, nice click. And also with those central MMI terminal. There we go. This is also the um, biggest screen that is available here. And you will have all the GPS and no touch. That will still be done with this MMI terminal there. Then you will have, can for example, rest your, rest your hand on there. This is the Tiptronic, so not the S-Tronic. So there's still the converter gearbox is being used for the very strong engine right here. This will be new with the convertible here, the buttons to close and open the roof, because 
so far you had to hold it and um, sometimes it was said that it was for security reasons, I mean safety reasons, um, but now this should be possible, possible just with one click to open and close the roof to you know, to have more comfort. I'm not sure well about the regulations there, maybe they integrated some safety mechanism and then were allowed to do right that. And here armrest for example, the great build quality, everything is really fixed again, so um, you don't have to worry about that. So the high build quality we see everywhere, USB slots in there, inductive charging for the smartphone, but most of the things we're showing you at the moment are of course all optional. However, I really think that a basis A5 convertible will do just fine, enjoy the comfort, maybe also just take a manual transmission, not the biggest engine, you will be just fine with this car and enjoy you know, the, the basic style on the exterior and the comfort on the interior, because with all of the options here, the car will get super expensive, really. Also, the convertible will optionally feature the, feature the virtual cockpit, 12.3 inch. There you can also change the views and stuff if the ignition would be turned on right now. This is the S view, so you have the big RPM meter, for example. But you can also just go with the basic cockpit layout, because this one will a couple of thousand extra price in combination also with the biggest GPS. Rear seats? Well, you will have more legroom than, for example, in an A3. And convertible, but I won't uh, push it forward now because I want to have the seats as I would be seating actually in the front. And you see, that does actually exactly work knee room wise. However, I will have to be sitting a little bit cramped in the rear headroom wise. But it shows if you want to do um, a tour with four adults with open top. That's no problem, that would work. With close top, of course, you know, it's not too easy to get the people in and out. Um, so that's maybe just when you need it in emergency cases or just like sometimes, you know, when I get two people to the train station or whatever. Other than that, when you use it as a single or two people car, you also see the, the holes here. You can show that as well when I move the seat forward. You can, that's a good solution, by the way. You can move the seat electrically forward from here. There's a hole right here and also at the other side. Um, this is here to mount the wind deflector. It's a really huge one. You can fold it up and that is playing a massive effect because this is probably the convertible to drive all year. Um, the real true convertible to drive all year because together when you have all the windows up and the wind deflector also in place, you can even drive it like at zero degrees and 110 kilometers or like 60 miles on a, on a motorway even in, in winter times. So that is probably also one main reason to go for such a convertible here and not for a very, very sporty one. This one here you can use all year. Unless, for example, you, you know you have an Audi TT. That one, for example, is really a summer convertible. In the winter it will be too cold. This one not. Now what can we fit in the trunk? Let's see. It opens automatically with this hydraulic function. This is a setup we have at the moment when the roof is opened. When the roof is closed, you can also push this one further. There's also a button for it. And then you would have more height. Um, it's still limited, of course, but you can see in this new generation, it's also easier accessible than in the one before. Um, there's also more space below this, that part here. And from here, you can also flip the seats, for example, here and also on, on this side. You can release it and then you can see you can fold the seat oh, it automatically automatically folds down and i can also see on the rear there's a top tether to mount child seats and also i've seen on the rear seats we have the isofix covers there so one very good use for the rear seats could also be mounting two child seats so that one is fully compatible for that one and here well wow, it's really good function works very flawlessly and i really wonder i mean this release mechanism does not work that well even in the A4 uh, Avant, so in the estate version, works better here. So loading through longer things is actually not a problem, just very high things when the roof is mounted. Again, this space here would be open then again when you have the roof closed. So here we go with the conclusion A5 convertible. I think 
still a masterpiece of design, even though maybe the very, very first A5 generation, I like maybe even a little bit more, because in the front it was a little bit, you know, more aligned. This one here, however, a little bit more dramatical. And it is surely one of the cars, you know, I would probably go for as a true leisure car to have this comfortable but yet sporty ride and drive it all season. Also, um, like other mid-size convertibles, for example, the Mercedes C-Class convertible, we have had that in a full review as well, so you can also compare that one. And for both, actually, I mean, they're both very competitive. Both come close in some respects, um, but for both, it counts the same. You can also get it in a lower trim and also not with the biggest engine, and then you have a great convertible for all purposes, basically, and without spending too much money. They're not cheap, definitely not, but if you go for it in the very high trim, then again it will get very expensive. But overall, I think one of my personal favorite cars. Well, you cannot fit a bicycle in there, but other than that, a lot of purposes solved there. A true Auto Gefühl car for sure. A special motor show preview of the Volkswagen Tiguan for the US market, or called Tiguan Allspace for the European market, because this one here is the Tiguan, so called. XL or with the long wheelbase and this one here is today an auto fuel your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're going to take a detailed tour here on the exterior and the interior and of course tell you everything first of all for US customers in general about this car and also for our European viewers what is different from the normal short wheelbase five-seater version here you can also get optional seven seats and as I said, it will have the appendix name All Space then for the European market where you can also get the other version. Let's dig now into the details in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Now we have a live test for, you know, for all seven seats, I would say. Ladies, please go. <laughs> so, one, two, three. <laughs> Four, now the seats can be flipped. Five, six, seven. Yeah, we can we can um, move the bench backwards a little bit. If you if you grab below, you can grab below. Yeah, and then slide back. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, so how how are you, how are you guys feeling here? Great. It feels great. Nice and roomy. Yeah, great. So it does fit for seven, right? Yeah. So, so uh, how how tall are you, H? Four ten. Five three. Five eleven. Five six. Five seven, five eight, five four. Okay, so and that I would say test solved. In the front, both Tiguan versions are pretty much the same, stressed by those horizontal fins in the layout. By the way, it's very interesting. Sometimes you can see a Tiguan where the middle fin here is not in chrome but in black, and I think it looks really better this way, definitely. And the reason is when you have the top headlights, the top trim for the headlights, then it is also stressed here by the middle chrome trim and that's why most of our test vehicles, but of course the manufacturers always equip them with the top headlights to show you yeah, that's what we got. Then we always got the middle fin here, but some of the customer vehicles have that one missing because maybe not everyone wants to go for the huge big headlights here with the, with the, you know, with the best technology. It is being said that the Tiguan Allspace or the Tiguan, just Tiguan in the for US market, has a little bit different front here on the, on the hood. Um, but I've compared it in, in two photos and couldn't really see a difference. Maybe the line is placed a little bit differently. But overall, I think an elegant but yet strong look. Not too rugged for sure, if you, for example, compare it to a Volkswagen Atlas. But I think a good stance for a compact SUV on the road. 4 meter 70 or 15 foot 4 is the total length of the US Tiguan or Tiguan Allspace. And this is a little bit longer than the normal version. So you have more wheelbase, 11 
centimeters more wheelbase and overall the total length is 22 centimeters longer. That will of course leave you more room on the inside. This is the same length than the Škoda Kodiak and both cars sit on the same platform, have the same length. So indeed there is a choice at least for the European or also Chinese customers. And you can also see 20 inch rims here, the top inch that are mounted with this vehicle in the general design. It's really accentuated by the designer on the height directly of the door handles. Pretty sharp stance on the road here. Also with a play of light and shadow. And then what is interesting, the frame here. So with the short wheelbase Tiguan, it goes like this and comes here that way. And here the long wheelbase version or the US version. This raises here a little bit with the chrome frame and then has the round shape. So this is just um, a very detail. I like that the design is carried out through over the fuel cap that looks pretty dramatic. Other than that, the real arches are accentuated by this off-road look in the black plastics. If you go for an R-line later on, you can also have that one changed. I think it doesn't look, you know, too stretched. It's not that the longer wheelbase is hurting the Tiguan design in any way, or what do you think? The rear is very typical for a Volkswagen hatch design and has now those stretched horizontal layout of the taillights. They have a little step right in there, look very modern. This one is the so-called SEL version, this is the US trims and SEL is the top trim you will also see that on the inside very soon. The price for the Tiguan All Space in Germany will be 30,000 euros, that's including VAT or Mehrwertsteuer, and that is a little bit higher than the short previous version, but the reason for that is it starts in a higher trim and also not with a very entry engine. We will soon talk more about the engines. Pricing in US is not decided yet as of today, but as the Volkswagen Atlas very large SUV price is now revealed with 30,000 US dollars without VAT. This one here will be less than 30,000 US dollars for pricing without value added tax. So that's interesting. When I'm standing in front of the car now and look down, I see what is meant by that the front is a little bit different. I think it comes a little bit further on, so it looks a little bit stronger. I think that our European shortway based Tiguan has a little bit more rounded front right here, so this looks a little bit stronger. Very interesting. So you can really see it here from when you're standing right here where I stand. And then let's take a look underneath the I don't know, a nice engine layout here for the four cylinders. And well, what do you have? So in Europe, a Tiguan would already start with a 1.4 liter with 125 horsepower, horsepower. That's not available, even not in Europe, with the all space version here. And this one here starts with a 1.4 liter with 150 horsepower, then the 2 liter petrol engine or with turbo, um, then with 180 or 220 horsepower, and then they also got the 2 liter TDI basically for the all space variants with 150, 190 or 220 horsepower. However, the main US engine will of course be the petrol engines, Volkswagen's, um, you know, not anymore in the diesels in the US. Um, and the 180 horsepower version for the US will they have 186 horsepower, so six horsepower more. It's not a real big difference it, because the engines are a little have a little bit different setup from the so-called homologation. So you are the process where you align a car to a certain market. While the big brother, the Volkswagen Atlas, is built in Chattanooga, Tennessee, this one here, the Tiguan for the US market or Tiguan Allspace that you will get in Europe, is built in Mexico, in Puebla. And the question is always, oh, you know, is car cars built in Mexico has less quality? Well, maybe it has been the case in the past. However, nowadays, I'm not sure if there are still any signs left. We can test the build quality right now and let's try to find out would this be an argument to say, you know, I live in Germany and I decide between a 5 and a 7 seater and I take the 5 seater because I know it's built in, in Germany, not the one that is built in Mexico. Let's find out. So we open the door and it's the same door closing sound that we know from the normal Tiguan. This is here again, as I said, the 
high trim level and with the Tigon we usually find very good build quality, also soft materials used almost everywhere or also on the inside of the doors. Just this part here is plain plastic, reasonable space also on the inside of the doors. And then those seats here, I'm pretty sure this is the real animal skin setup. Um, however, the same with the Volkswagen Atlas, you have three options, fabric, then full leatherette, so fake leather. You can pick that one when you want to wipe seats, for example. Climate-wise, fabric is always best. And then the animal skin, I th think it should be that one. Um, however, it's always hard to tell nowadays because leatherette is keeping getting better and better. And we have all seen the Tesla Model X, for example, where you couldn't tell the difference between like an 8,000 euros real animal equipment and, you know, this serial leatherette so but i think this one should be the the, the you know the the animal skin you can always check the configurator prices or with your dealer then to get your choice electric seat setup we do have here and well it's a compact suv um, however you already feel like you would be in a big suv that has changed from the old tiguan generation to this very all new tiguan generation it feels like a bigger car i realized when i first saw it on the iaa as the presentation um, so you already have a um, command driving view for sure not that huge for example than the volkswagen atlas they have this very big front which is like going straight here the front is going a little bit down again and that gives you a little bit better overview to the road and um, headroom wise this is the one equipped with a panoramic roof one meters 86 or six foot one and still have room above my head and um, if you want to have even more then you would leave out the panoramic roof mm, shouldn't be a good idea if you for example uh, you know live in california texas it can get a little bit hot then then you should probably leave that option out so there we go with the cockpit overview the tiguan cockpit is always very clean that's for sure here also now equipped with the new infotainment screen we know from the golf facelift all MQB models, also the Tiguan, will receive this new infotainment screen one by one. Now the Tiguan All Space or Tiguan, just Tiguan for the US market, will already have that one here as a top trim. Means this ones are not real buttons anymore, just those two. Um, those will work in a capacitive way. Here it says also, you know, welcome to Volkswagen. Connected with the premium audio system. And then, for example, you can connect your phone via Bluetooth. That is the one possibility. There's also an inbuilt navigation or GPS available. You can, however, also use this app mode and then um, connect, for example, your phone via, via, via cable, here, Apple CarPlay and stuff. Um, let's see if the map is available. Yeah, there we go. We're in, in Detroit here. So greetings to all our American friends here today uh, funny thing is always you know america canada america canada america canada homer simpson style so really funny and we're here at the garden theater tonight um see i think this this view takes some time to whoa okay so that takes takes some time so in, in germany the gps system it's always a little bit faster, so maybe it has to do with the GPS connection. Or and sometimes those cars are also in pre-production builds. I'm not quite sure what it is about. Maybe it's the connection inside this hall here. I'm not exactly sure. But you see it works with zooming in and out and also scrolling. But I'm not sure what the reason. It could react a little bit faster like we are used to for sure. And with car, you can have the consumption figures and stuff. So, for example, at the dashboard, also the soft plastic touch is used. Even in the very far regions here, there's no hard plastic. So we find a lot of elements which are really, you know, equal to the German built Tiguan, for sure. Also, the glove box is sliding down smoothly. Um, well, this one is hard plastic then again, but this really looks very much like also with the um, you know with the automatic the dual clutch transmission which we have here in the Tiguan version then also with this drive selector for off-road modes and stuff you will have when you have the four motions so um, just a very entry 
engines will not have the overdrive and just optionally the bigger ones always have those two usb ports in the very front are also available together with the 12 volt power supply then we come to beverage holders which are adaptive so fit different sizes and well there are maybe some hints um, for example i'm not sure if it's about pre-production or if it's really um um, you know, because it's built from another supplier in Mexico. For example, here, this armrest, it's fixed to right and left, but then again, if you let it fall down, that that doesn't happen with the normal two guns. So my verdict is here that um, if you uh, compare other cars, which are mainly on the American market, this one here definitely has, has a better build quality and a lot of most parts are really equal, but you find some, if you really look in detail, you do find some parts that are a little bit better in the European built Tiguan. At least if you go for this um, for this uh, motor show model here. We will see it later on when it comes to the real C reproduction model. And then we will do again a test to compare the seven seater and the, the five seater version. And you know, then have, have a final verdict, but at least for me now, I think it's not really a reason to, to say, you know, I don't want a Mexican Tiguan because it seems pretty fine. Just in some very, very small details, then you can maybe say it. But I think the, the crucial decision should really rather be five of seven seater. And now it gets really exciting because from the more in length and more on wheelbase, this will also affect the interior, of course. And it's supposed to have six centimeters longer interior in the rear and I mean the normal Tiguan I think the seat is still a little bit further back that would be my seating position rather so from the normal Tiguan I think you already have a quite good package and here you feel that you have a little bit more space um, maybe I could even sit a little bit more in the front um, but um, I've just been in the Volkswagen Atlas and that was like surreal which <laughs> knee room you had there um, but you see you're really fine with with my size. Um, again, the panoramic roof still works. Um, if you're above 190 or above, say, or like six foot two, then you should definitely leave out the panoramic roof because then you have even more headroom right here because the panoramic roof always, you know, you lose this kind of headroom. But again, very comfortable sitting position, upright sitting position here also in the rear. And one of my favorite things is also that you can adjust the rear part here so you can make it a little bit steeper or um, also there it is like this can you make it a little bit steeper or also put it more in the rear depending on how you actually want to sit and the difference for example to a Seat Ateca which also has you know a lot of leg room here in the rear here you can also slide the rear bench here to have more trunk or then again to have the maximum room here for the knees so you're quite flexible with it and now let's go for the sixth and the seventh seat and we can slide it here like this then you can also get in there and the question is how much room will remain uh, first of all you just look right here um, it's different than from the Volkswagen Atlas because you see I'll sit a little bit cramped here in the Volkswagen Atlas I can really sit like rather like this like upright and also headroom wise well that does still work for me actually that's interesting. Nice actually, but also a little bit more headroom in the Volkswagen Atlas. And now is the question when I slide down the back the bench. So this is the maximum setup I can still sit and then you have to check how much knee room would there be in the front. Mm, not really. And that shows um, the last seating row is rather really for very short guys. Um, and the thing is, what they actually forgot is there's no ISO fix cover here, here and no um, no to top tether is there. Wait a minute, I'm just no, there's no. So um, the child seat is really rather for the second row, but here the third row, no child seat mount is possible. I think this is uh, something they should fix. It's the same, by the way, in the Škoda Kodiak. So what do we have here? This is the electric tailgate that is equipped with the high trim levels. However, you can also go with a manual tailgate, basically. Um, sometimes when you think when you want to stuff something in, um, you can be more gentle with the manual tailgate. This is a setup here for the trunk. 
you see we got this special cover here in comparison to the short wheelbase version because this aligns the floor of the loading area with the sixth and the seventh seat. This cargo area you would have then when they are folded down and you can see we got also more lengths than here with the long wheelbase version. Um, here beneath that is the that cover hidden for example you can also put in with an up and also a full replacement tire then you can pull the seats up also from here six and seven seats like this you need to have some power but see also works with just one hand and you can also pull them down with the lever right lever right here so here put up the head restraints and looking forward to how does it actually you know behave when I sit in the rear here and still Volkswagen engineers. I have not forgotten about this. Um, I think with uh, Seat Attica lately, there we had one vehicle where the torque was applied a little bit better. But here in the last Tiguan test, I think I think it's still too much torque with the electric tailgate if you would do the child safety test. And it still is. Sorry, I'm still not satisfied, so I think it's a little bit too strong. Should loosen it up a little bit. And now my final conclusion for the day, Tiguan for the US market or Tiguan All Space as this will be available in Europe. So with the option to go for the seven seats, you do not have it automatically. You can then go for the seven seat here. You can, for example, also just pick the longer wheelbase and not have the seven seats or pick a normal Tiguan in US and don't go for the seven seats. But it basically makes sense because you're more flexible than exterior for sure very elegant as we know from the Tiguan yet strong not too strong and also the longer wheelbase doesn't do any damage to the general Tiguan design interior very clean a very good build quality I did find some details that are better with the European built Tiguan however it's you know no biggies and we have to see how, what is it with the final version when we are past this pre-production model here for example uh, it's a good package uh, if we think about the space that is being used for sure and we've tested the knee space here. We also had the, um, <laughs> the test with the very uh, likable ladies here. I hope you enjoyed that one too. Um, of course you have more space for example in the Volkswagen Atlas but considering the length of the car is very good definitely. If you compare a Škoda Kodiak there's a little bit more room on the inside. For example here you get 115 liters more of the trunk space comparing to the short wheelbase version but you have a little bit more room than in the Škoda Kodiak for example um, which one you go for in Europe well it's I think a matter of the um, of the dealer price you get the concise price you get for example and if you rather you know connected with the Volkswagen or the Škoda brand that technology is um, rather the same for sure and US customers now finally have the all new generation of the Tiguan that's thing the most important thing about this very car and we've shown you that in earlier reviews so also all US friends can also enjoy the other Tiguan reviews because most of the stuff we, we told you there really counts for both versions for sure one element of the new SUV strategy from Volkswagen especially for the US market the other one the bigger brother the Atlas you can enjoy that also will be linked in the video description there was the world premiere with AJ and now the Atlas R line with Thomas here so enjoy that and also more of our Detroit Motor Show coverage this was very really calm here tonight but only because we waited very very long at this exclusive premiere to have a very thorough presentation just exclusively for you guys so I hope you appreciate our effort Thank you so much for watching. The Volkswagen Atlas R design that is today here on a preview from Auto Fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We are in Detroit and the Atlas we have shown you it before AJ presented it you at the world premiere, but this one here now focuses on the R design. We will tell you everything about the car, about the special sporty line, which will be the top line of this car. So of course give you a full tour on exterior interior of this car and show us what other possibilities you have and also which 
room, how much space you have on the inside. Let's go. The Volkswagen Atlas is an SUV that is built in America for the American market. So it's built in Chattanooga, Tennessee and is only sold here in Northern America, not in Europe for example. And you can see the front is also suited for the American customer. Really strong, really massive, a very wide appearance. And the R-Ride now features, for example, two elements and you will find it everywhere on the car. First of all, more stuff in vehicle color. For example, the non R line doesn't have the vehicle color, but just the black plastic in right here, and also black elements. So you will find, like here, vehicle color at the lower part, and then black elements here. Fork lights are included in the R line as well. So it looks classy, you know, a little bit sportier, of course, as the R line says, but at the same time, less off road style, more as a road sport style. 5 meters 04 or 16 foot 5. This is the total length of this vehicle. So we are in a, for European purposes, full size SUV segment. For American purposes, it's, you know, not a small SUV, but also not a very huge one, but long enough for sure. The R line here features now those special blades here, or says R line, 20 inch rims. So huge rims for that one. You can see it also in a contrasting here to the white color. Here a little bit of rugged style still, the wheel arches in the trapeze form, still with the black plastic fenders. And you see the big design line is below the door handles, a very sharp design line, which gives a little bit play of light and shadow and everything else. More form follows function really. It's just interesting that the design line here is all again aligned with the wheel arches and that, well, makes them even stronger. Here you see when I'm, I almost get lost here and then I get lost with little cars. If you've already seen the Abad 595 review, <laughs> I was looking out of the roof. It's a little bit different right here. What do you think? How do you like it? Volkswagen Head of America, Heinrich Wöpken, just revealed the price of this vehicle. It starts at about 30,000 US dollars and goes up to 48,000 US dollars. And this one could be it because this one is here the SEL version and then the R line is put on that one so the top version so this one will come closer if you pick the bigger engine and I'll soon tell you more about the engines and you can see the rear design big Atlas writing here the name was picked for the US market because some of the German Volkswagen names um, they're not so well to, pr to, to pr pr pronounce in, in, in English for example that was also one of the reasons and you see the R line here features again a black shiny finish and also the covers for the exhaust and let me just check how fake they are and well seems pretty much fake yeah so both of the exhausts are fake now. Um, not sure if it's depending on the um, on the engine you pick, but you know that's a common style nowadays to go for those fake exhausts. But anyway, I think overall the R design is a really attractive line, as also with the other Volkswagen vehicles we know it. Would you pick the Atlas in the R design or the R line? It says here, or would you rather go for the normal one? And let's look underneath the hood. And indeed, this is why we have the fake exhaust. This is the TSI, this is the small turbo petrol engine, 2 liter with 238 horsepower. And also you can get a 3.6 liter V6, naturally aspirated engine, then it would say FSI, with 280 horsepower. And that will probably not make the fake exhaust um, then in the rear. But overall, I mean, you have the two engine choice, or either the turbo or the naturally aspirated one. I would probably go with a bigger one uh, because the consumption shouldn't be higher really with the bigger one and the naturally aspirated engines are usually also creating less of those uh, very small particles that are uh, hazardous. And now let's get inside and I will also show you the famous door closing sound, a very famous test in the fuel. And that sounds really solid as we also know it from Volkswagen. What can you see on the inside? 
this is the front part here and we have different trims available. This one here is the highest trim as I've told you earlier. And the R-Line also features, for example, some white contrast stitching or some entry caps. Also the pedals are in aluminum. And we'll also soon take a look at the infotainment screen. In general about the Volkswagen Atlas, well at some points a little bit cheaper materials are used in, for example in a Touareg or in a Tiguan because this one here, as I said with the price, should be also kept low in price and should rather be rugged than totally you know, high-end stuff, should have more room. But again, for example, it's not all with hard plastics, for example, even on the top side here of the door, for example, this is a little bit soft touch here, just the lower parts are sometimes here with, with the very hard plastics. But I guess you can live with that because also, for example, in the dashboard we got um, soft materials again. It looks like it would be uh, leather, but it's not, I'm glad. And um, I think they found a good solution, good balance between you know, not doing too much, also saving some production cost and still having some stuff looking a little bit better. However, if you wanted more high-class style, you should probably go for a Volkswagen Tiguan or a Touareg. The Tiguan with, with a seven-seater, also for the US market, will also be in the Autogefühl review. You can check that out in the video description. You can already see that we have an electric seat set up. And let's get inside. Um, those seats, um, they look like an animal skin trim. However, I do not have the full price list of the Atlas yet. Um, and if you check it in the configurator and the price list, you should always check that you pick an animal skin free alternative if there is one available. So, overall, first impression is here definitely a lot of space, so it's a lot, really, really roomy. The steering wheel can be adjusted in all directions, like this, so pretty much any way you want to have it. And you can see when I look to the front, a really huge front hood. So this is also a difference, for example, to, um, to a tour rack. There, there you have more the feeling that you have a you know, very rugged car. More like, for example, when you look out of, a, um, of the windscreen of a Volkswagen Amarok, for example, like this. And everything else is really typically Volkswagen. So if you're already a Volkswagen customer, you will also get along with everything immediately because all of the stuff is really arranged. And the, the interesting stuff is, although this is such a long vehicle, even longer than a tour rack, this one here still sits on the MQB platform, the platform in the Volkswagen Corporation for the rather compact cars. Although, for example, the Touareg is on the MLB platform for the cars that have um, the engine in another direction mounted in the front. And, um, you know, that shows how much you can really do from those modular building platforms even go very long. So the cockpit overview, stressed by horizontal lines. Um, here you can also see wood style. And you see from the outside, this design line is a little bit mirrored also on the inside. And this car is also about a lot of stuff you can put somewhere. So we're starting, for example, right here on the top one. The infotainment screen, this is the top trim that is available. You see it is aligned. You also need a microfiber tissue to clean it for the, for the fingerprints and stuff. Um, also the buttons here on the side, no real buttons left. Those ones here, those are capacitive hotkeys. The R-Line features in this welcome logo as well so they're special then for the for the r line and um the infotainment system is like we know from other volkswagen cars app connect will also feature the smartphone mirroring function but you can also connect your phone via bluetooth for example so and you can also um use this key here for example in the um, uh, in, in, in the gps if you have one for example to, to zoom in and out there are no menus left and right here, but you can go for example here for radio, this is the volume, and you also get an app hotkey right here. This would be then for the smartphone connection. And obviously here in this car this is meant to be that you use the smartphone for your GPS then. Temperature control is right here. You will also then the cars later turn on, see the temperature right here, seat heating, and it's not too low, you can easily access it. Then USB port is hidden right in near this, this spot, also 12 volt power supply you will find there. Beverage holder is quite huge, I mean <laughs> not for American purposes maybe, but big enough for sure. Also a little bit adaptive, automatic transmission, and then this is really a special thing, haven't seen it in any Volkswagen yet. First of all the armrest here is really stable, I like it when it's solid, it shows the build quality. And then there's so much room on the inside. Um, AJ showed it on the world premiere, they can even put a tablet in here and also charge it with a USB port. 
And let's get inside here in the rear and I've just checked with the product manager for the Atlas here for Volkswagen America and indeed those are full leatherette seats. You have three options, gloss, full leatherette or animal skin and so the R-Line comes with a full leatherette package and thus also very recommendable. And I think it also shows that I couldn't really 100% tell what it was that we don't need the real animal skin anymore. Let's get inside because the main thing here is that we have a lot of knee room. I'm well, not sure if you can speak of knee room. I can pull my full length hand in front of my knees. So, um, well, that's really a lot. Cannot switch the... Yeah, there it is. So, and I could even like... Yeah, go like this. This would still work and that's maybe the middle position of the rear bench. You can already see it behind me. And it makes sense that someone can still uh, sit in the rear. We can um, test it out quite soon. So you're really flexible, can have more loading space here. And we will soon also show you from the rear how it will look like if you have the seat here far in the back and then the six and seven seats folded. But so far, really promising. And I can also switch around to the middle seat. And even here, you have a lot of room. There are USB ports also beneath me. Optionally, you can get a uh, climate control also for the rear part and then also puts the beverage holders in the middle part. So especially here from the rear, it's probably the, the most roomy aspect about that vehicle. And then what about child seats? AJ has shown that on the world premiere you can also mount a child seat here. Isofix covers um, are available even on the middle seat. So in the rear bench, one, two, three child seats, Isofix covers here and also top to that, uh, behind it. I can show you that very soon. And then there's this mechanism that you can even probably have the child seat still mounted and keep it mounted. See the top tails are right here for the child seat fixation. Then you have an easy entry for the very last seating row. This is a very interesting concept. And this is one of the very few cars. I will try to fold it back now. Hold on. There we go. And this is really one of the very few cars where I could still sit like this. And it also works with my knees. And even here now, um, this is almost the, you know, the, the, the farthest position the rear bench could go. I could easily sit in the front. And it would be no problem as I was sitting um, before. I could maybe have like this knee room here in the very rear and then have the same knee room in the front of me. So you can sit I think we were yeah, seven, two meter persons here almost. Well, I'm one meter 86 and then or six foot one. This does exactly also fit well with the headroom right here. So let's say seven, 190 persons or seven with a six foot two. That does exactly work here with the others. The only thing is that they, um, they didn't have the Isofix covers here in the rear. They just have, you feel on the on the rear, you have the top tether on the on the rear of those seats here. By the way, you can also put the headrest up, then it's more comfortable. But I mean, if you have a big family, this could be very suitable. So you can fold down again. You remain very flexible. Just for Europe, it would probably be a little bit too big. But then again, if you think about some of the Foster's SUV are almost also five meters. Um, so, but they don't offer so much space. So the package you have here you know from what you have on the outside and then you get on the inside um, is probably one of the best I've seen so far. And now what about the cargo area you can really call it that way. Electric tailgate here for the top version and you can see wow there's really a lot of room left also a low loading sill goes all the way through here behind you can um, also have some more space also optionally fit in a replacement tire Everything else is really practical that you have this even loading surface. You can also then flip the seats in front of you or that is the real trick here. You can also from the rear put up the last seating row here for the six and seven seats. You can see you can also leave it split for example. That would also be possible. And if you pick this one up here as well, like this, then you still have, you know, reasonable space left. So think even a big family should very well be able to use that car.
So here we go, my first Volkswagen Atlas review and also the first look at the R line. And well, what does this vehicle offer? First of all, a very competitive price for sure, then a very rugged exterior. However, a lot of you guys when the world premiere said don't like that car so much from the exterior. Maybe we can discuss it, discuss it again. What's what's your take on that one? I think, well, I found, for example, a Tiguan or Touareg more beautiful. But again, you know, this has a very strong appearance for sure. And, you know, I can't say I don't like it, even though, again, as I said, I probably like um, a Tiguan more for its elegance. Then on the inside, this is really, um, really class leading because I've seen a lot of other big SUVs and they don't have nearly as much space as we have inside here. So as I said, seven persons with 190 in meters or six for two, that does indeed work. A solid and good build quality on the inside we've seen as well, even though it's in some parts a little bit cheaper than with the other higher class uh, cars, also inside the Volkswagen Corporation. But then again, you always have to check the balance between price you know, and performance and what you get. And you know, it's a question of what do you want, what is more important to you. Good that they also offer a full leather red option. I would always go for the fabric seats because they stay colder in summer. But if you want to have something, maybe also going with children, you can wipe cleanly. Then the leather, leather red option is also a good choice. So that's also checked. And I think overall, I think this car could really perform very well, especially on the American market. And maybe Volkswagen can also get rid of the diesel bad image then, because this one is also, of course, not offered with the diesel, at least not yet. And let's see on which other markets this car will also be introduced by now. So, what do you think about exterior interior? Give me your feedback. What do you think about this car we've shown you here so far? And also check out the non R line review with AJ from the world premiere to have a comparison on that. So, that's it for this car here in full HD, full screen and full length. And also tune in to our next episodes.